Hello, and welcome to Jason Cadmus Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cadmus. Our guest today is Jelani Givens. Jelani, you agree to be great today? Yeah. Jelani was raised in, in the central, Seattle Central District, where he grew up within gang life. He became homeless and separated from his family at 15 years old and lived on his own, hopping from couch to couch all the way until he was 17. Fortunately, he was able to step away from the gang life at the age of 24. Also around that time, around the same time he became a homeowner, he became a political activist around 26 years old and became a Republican around 27 and precinct county officer around the same year. He recently ran for office at the age of 29. Then afterward, he became vice president for the Virginia Taylor Club after election. John Liney, thanks for being here today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, cheers. Yes, sir. And thanks to Susanna for introducing me to the Liney. She's the best. He's definitely good. So... For people not from the Seattle area, what is the Central District? Like, that, is, it, is, like is it like a bad neighborhood or something, or is that, that the hood? That, or like, I mean, what is it? that's what I grew up believing was the hood, you know, because that's where a good amount of the Black population was. It was the Central District and the South End, and those were the only two areas that I really knew about as a kid, because those were also the two groups that were rival, like rival gangs. So Tacoma, I never even really knew anything about Tacoma until I ended up moving into my house. Um, so when you say gangs, you mean like a local street gang, something like the Bloods and Crips, like exactly uh, like, we, like how big of the gang were these? We were Bloods, but it was like an, uh, a set, offset of Bloods. So a uh, low profile street gang. Uh, it was, I was very involved. I mean, as, long, as far as the youth goes, me and my family members would do a lot within the community, not good things. So it's like, I always was known the gang life. Like that's like the thing that they would say to me, like the gang life is all you know. So that used to stick in my head a lot. Like, this is all I know. I probably won't make it past 18. Then when I made it past 18, I'm like, well, I probably won't make it past 21. When I made it past 21, I was like, oh, well, okay, what's next? What am I going to do next? I'm making it pass, so I'm obviously not the statistic, so let me try to do something with my life. Now, it's part of the lure of the gang life, so to speak, and I'll make this up maybe, like, it's like they actually, like, in the only way take care of you, like, they build a community around you, like, there's something you can depend on, that kind of stuff? In theory, that's what it was supposed to be, about. but as time went on, and, you know, you take fathers from the, the, the structured home, and, you know, they give you this this sense of like family for the most part and it's even worse when like you have family that's actually in it so it's like you you don't want to move away from that because it's like a good amount of your family members are in it as well so it was uh it was an interesting road for me personally to have to break away from a lot of that because my family was also involved I, I would go to like family events and stuff like Christmas events and then I would have like my great uncle is going, Hey, you, uh, you still, a, you still a part of the gang. Like you, you still down for the gang. And I'm like, yeah, 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 of course. Like I was like, of course you got the family, you got are my family. So it took me stepping away and then a good amount of my family members stepping away and realized, okay, this is lame. We need to get our stuff together. Let's change the image of our family. So, I mean, for me personally, Politically, my family was not on board with me at first. Now, I'm one of the best people to have at the family functions. I'm known as the Republican in the family. So, so how did you break away from the gang? I mean, is this a matter you say I'm not doing this anymore? Or they they like try to force you to stay on? Like, well, hey, if you leave, we're gonna break your legs or something like that? Or is this well, you're no, see break? how my family was like some of the people that was well known within that. It was like me stepping away was just moving out of the general area and not really affiliating with that kind of lifestyle. I mean, that's why I stayed out of like downtown Seattle because I I'd wanted to minimize the chances of people who knew me wanting to interact with me and why I stayed out of like West Seattle because it was a good amount of people that knew me in West Seattle. Stayed out of the Central District because a good amount of people that knew me in the Central District. So I'm like, and they knew who my family was. So, or my mom and my mom, she's not even known for, for gangs, but she is known for, you know, being a, a rowdy person and also uh, hair, doing hair. 
because she's a hairstylist out in Seattle. So literally everybody knew my mom. So it was like, my family's fairly large. I'm the oldest grandchild out of 30 plus children. So my grandmother, she's the oldest, second oldest out of nine, and she had eight kids. So in like 20 years, I could probably take over Seattle. Like that's how deep my family is. My great grandparents and their brothers and sisters still own all of their property in Seattle. So having said that, you kind of like a, had a, I don't know, disagreement with your family and, and move out of the house or you came home for a while. Can you talk about that process and how they came about? Uh, well, I was, my dad was going through some things and he just ended up losing his house and going through a divorce. So he, I, me and him didn't even have a real good relationship anyway. So I was living with my great grandparents. Um, at that point, they were just trying to figure out what they wanted to do with me because me, I was doing too much. So I just so you're like in the streets doing like not good stuff. Going yeah, on. I was skipping school, and I mean, even when I was going to school, I would only go to the classes that I cared about, like the engineering classes or something. But like, I didn't go to like social studies or whatever. And like, yeah, my family was getting kind of fed up, and they knew that well, my dad wasn't an option. They were trying to figure stuff out. So I was like, well, okay, you know, I'll I'll help you guys out. On top of the fact, my mom was figuring her living condition. She was uh, back and forth in uh, shelters for uh, all for all women. So I, I couldn't go to the shelters with her because it was for domestic violence women. So it was one of those things where my brother was in kind of a foster care, but a but, uh, little program and she needed to get like housing in order for him to get him back. So those were like some of the things that we had to deal with. So the way in my mind, I was like, okay, well, let me just separate myself from these guys and try to figure out what I'm going to do on my own. And how many brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, my dad, he has three sons, including me, and uh, three daughters. And then my mom, including me, two sons and one daughter. Okay. So being the oldest of 33 grandkids, were you like supposed to be like the one in charge, so to speak, like setting the example, but then you would have not, you been the gang life? It definitely felt that way, especially when I would talk to like my great grandparents, because my great grandparents, they weren't full the BS. Like those were the people that I ended up talking to when it came to like getting married or like just any aspect of my life. So it's like... I definitely listened to my great grandparents still do listen to them. They're still alive, you know? So it's like, I try to get as much insight from them as much as I can. If not them, then my grandparents, but like, I guess those, those two were the ones that were the ones that wanted me to get out that kind of life themselves as well. That's why I did my best to try to focus on school, but there were so many distractions. So I, I got a skipping story school for you, right? Skipping school story for you, right? Excuse me, skipping school. So in the sixth grade, I was like one of the only white people in a black junior high called Page Junior High, right? And me and my friend Patrick Norman, sixth grade, me and him skipped school for 12 straight days. We were like, like sneaking to movie theaters, you know, sneaking to whatever, like stuff going on, right? Doing stuff that's probably going to do. So I felt like, man, we got, this is ridiculous, right? No one's coming to look for us. Like, you know, like, I don't know what's going on. Let's go back to school. We were back to school. And guess what our punishment was? Three day suspension. Yeah. So like not going to school no more. <laughs> exactly. We're like, damn. Okay. Yeah, I was known for being an in school suspension a lot. And the reason for that is because I also did sports. Mm -hmm. So even in like middle school, they would cut corners for me and be like, yeah. hey, okay, well, we're not gonna suspend you because we need you for the sport you're playing, but we're gonna put you in in school suspension so you still get a punishment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So from the age of 17 to 24. At 24, you first seemed like you turned your life around and started doing better things, so to speak. It, what happened between 17 and 24? I moved to Tacoma. So moving to Tacoma kind of gave me some, some peace because I didn't know anybody. Like Tacoma. But, but isn't Tacoma known as like, you know, kind of like, you know, rough and tumble, kind of like, you know, not a good place either? Surprisingly enough, Tacoma looks at the Central District like that's the Wild West. So, I mean, even though they see Tacoma as a bad place, I seen Tacoma as being harmless and nobody knew me. And I felt like I was more dangerous than the people who were in Tacoma. 
So I just brushed off people when I would walk past them. Like I had a really kind of a dangerous mindset once I left my hood because I had no attachments to the people that I lived in Tacoma with. So it's like I didn't value anybody's life once I moved to Tacoma. Nice. And you moved here when you moved to Tacoma when you were 24? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, yeah, I moved to Tacoma about, yeah, about 24-ish. Okay. Like 22, maybe. So. And then um, you're actually a homeowner now, right? Yeah. And you came home at like 24. That's, nowadays, that's a relatively young age. Like, you no, know, it's hard, so hard to find a home. Can you talk about how you were able to uh, get a house at such a young age? So how that worked? That was fun. So I got evicted out of my apartments in Seattle. So we were hurrying up to like get all of the, what we could. This guy was like, hey, well, I'll let you move into this property for just uh, first month down. You won't have to pay last or anything. So we were like, cool. He ended up seeing that I was young and trying to start a family. So he was like, okay, well, you can live here. My son used to live here. I'll let you live here. Um, just make sure to pay the rent and whatever. I made sure to pay my rent like a month ahead of time and I never missed any payments. And then he was like, well, the owners want to sell the house. I'm just the guy that manages all their properties. So I told them that you would be a good person to buy the house, see how you're starting a family. They're selling it for 109, but we're going to sell you it for 93K. So I was like, okay, well, and then I consulted with my mom. She said, if you don't buy the house, you're stupid. And then I looked at my mom and said, I don't want you to think I'm stupid. So I bought the house. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, and so Hilltop neighborhood in Tacoma, that's like, well, how for this like so you're saying it's not a better central district, it has a kind of better reputation. And well, it's ain't going I, like going to like regenerification right now, something like that too. I yeah, I believe it's going through the same thing that the central district went through. So that's why it's like a lot nicer now in the central. Like I feel like no fear when I go to the central compared to back in the day. So, but that's the thing for me, like I might feel that way about Tacoma, but the residents of Tacoma have every reason to feel the way they do. So it's like, it's still dangerous. It's just, I can't relate to them because it was, it's a completely different kind of feeling for me. Cause I like, Again, I like I, I already went through that kind of stuff through my own hood. And plus, when I talk to gang members and the younger generation in Tacoma and I tell them where I'm from and what gang that I was affiliated with, they look at me like, oh, Tacoma's nothing. So it's like it's hard for me to think that Tacoma's tough when even their gang members that do terrible things think that my hood is tougher. Yeah. So switch and shove subject real fast. You're a big Harry Potter fan, right? <laughs> yes. So, how did, so like, how did that come about, right? Like, how did you become so involved with Harry Potter? Hey, listen, um, I feel like everybody in the Black community loves magic and reality. And that's shown on TikTok, all right? Because through most of the content that was created on TikTok right now about Harry Potter, as soon as the game was released, it was majority of Black content creators. Uh they say that black folks don't like magic tricks. That's probably true. But at the same time, we're fascinated by the idea of source, like sorcerers and everything else. I mean, there, there's been, there's, it's shown that we used to practice voodoo and hoodoo and things like that. So magic is not out of the extraordinary when it comes to people like us. And plus my grandparents on my dad's side they were kind of into the, the dark arts kind of in sorts. So I was super fascinated. Like I couldn't even leave the house until they got them praying because they didn't want dark spirits to come into the house. Like it was a lot. So I couldn't even leave to go to school until they were done praying. So do you, do you, do you belong to a certain house? Like some people get so involved that I'm a Slytherin, I'm this, I'm that. I'm, I'm a Slytherin. Slytherin, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the house of Merlin. <laughs> And how do you get involved with Harry Potter since like uh, this first came or how did it get hooked? How did it hook you? My grandfather on my dad's side, he got me involved in movies. He took us to all the movies, whether it be Harry Potter or uh Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Like he was very big on making sure we went to all those as a family. And then I just adopted it ever since. 
Have you been to that? Is it like a Harry Potter amusement park somewhere? Have you been to that? I've been to. Uh, it was a. Uh, what is it? Uh, not you. Is it Universal? I'm not sure. I know there's Harry Potter something somewhere. Uh, wherever in California. Okay. I went. I went. To you that. went there and nerded out and geeked out. I I, I definitely tried my best not <laughs> to be the the most nerdish there. But yes, <laughs> I got me a scarf and everything. <laughs> Got him blonde and everything else. I think everybody's seen me playing around with that on, on TikTok for a minute. Um, how many how many movies did they make in that franchise? You have to know, like four or five, or more than that. I thought it was like eight. Was it eight? Do you have a do you have a favorite one? Oh, is that too hard to decide? Uh, I don't have a favorite one because I'm the type of person to watch all of them through Christmas. Okay, that's like a Christmas movie to me. Okay. Nice. Um, to be fair, I could be mixing up the number with Star Wars as well, because I'm like, no, nope, there's way more Star Wars movies. Uh, I'm a Star Wars head too. Yeah, uh, me too. Like, me too. Um, and then they make, didn't they make some prequels for Harry Potter? Uh, I heard they're in uh, because they they got the um, freaking the guy that collects all the mystical beasts. That's what. The, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember that movie. Yeah. And uh, it kind of branches off for yeah. that as well. So I, 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 being honest, I, I didn't vibe all, well, all too well to that one, but I do find the beast interesting. Nice. So. Nice. So since you brought up, let's talk about Star Wars real fast. Um, so some people like, of course, they're like the original movies, four, five, and six, they're the golden grill. Some people like the pupils, like fucking horrible. Some people come around, I, I, and and then people like the last are like, man, these like totally suck. Some people are like, what's your take on all those? Generational thing, I feel like Actually, they, I, I, they I, made I, it towards the gauge each generation. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's just like how certain people be like, oh, that music, my music was way better back in my yeah. day. Like that, like I, I like I can barely watch the older. Star Wars, and I'm like, oh man, this is kind of lame, but I know I need to watch it to get the full context of what's going on. Yeah. But then I like the newer Star Wars, where it's like, it's it's supposed to be more gauged towards my generation, yeah. and the younger generation, and so on. Especially when it comes to the graphics, mm -hmm. it's like some people like the classics. I I like the the newer cars. My, yeah. For my, me, like I, I think for me, the my two favorite were Empire Strikes Back and Revenge of the Sith. Empire Strikes Back says, you know, all the, you know, like, all the stuff they you know, Luke, I'm your father, you know, when they catch your hand, so all that kind of stuff. And Brandon was sick, that's because, you know, had everything set up. And the new movies, like, me personally, like, The Last Jedi, I think that movie is crap, right? right. Only part in it is when they, when uh, Kylo Ren and, um, and that lady's name, I can't remember her name right now. What's her name? Uh, shit. Ray. Ray. When, uh, when, when Kylo Ren kills Snoop and they, like, kill the, 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 the guards. Now, that's a badass scene, right? Yeah, yeah, he could have complained a little less being Darth Vader's uh, uh, grandchild, right? Yeah, that's that too. I'm like, okay, well. But, you know, have you, ever, have you watched the Star Wars, the Clone Wars, the animated, animated series? I keep trying to get into that. I keep looking at it, and I'm like, are you talking about Bad Batch? In, Not uh, those, the original Star Wars, Clone Wars. Uh, it was back in, like, 2014. I, I watched, like, the first season, and then, like... Yeah, if, if you like, if you can watch all seven seasons, it it, it actually sets up how Anakin becomes bad, like really, really good, right? A lot of background stories. So that that gives the the insight on his uh, the Padawan he trained as well. Yeah, he, yeah, uh, and some of the stuff he did, I go to the dark side. It's really good. Yeah. Um, think what else? And one thing, of course, I think every Star Wars fan for every Star Wars fan wants, but we'll never get is the actual Darth Vader movie. Like you know, from him like becoming a Sith to maybe the first three or four years, he just fucking goes on rampages and stuff. Yeah, everybody wants to see the dark, dark stuff. I'm yeah, like, like like a full movie of him like doing Rogue One stuff, you know. But I don't think we'll ever get that. They are, they like doing the video games instead of you having to deal with him. Yes, exactly. Um, so we're gonna come back to some other fun stuff in a minute. So in politics, what what motivated you to become involved in politics at twenty six? Most people twenty six, they don't vote, they do anything. What motivated you? And also tell a story. Um, I saw. I want to say I said on TikTok where you tell the story about um, how your grandmother told you to do your own research and how that came about. I think it's a pretty good story. Uh, so I got involved in politics, and because I mean I was already kind of on the fence, but I didn't really care because I was involved in the the gaming world. 
So I was doing a lot of gaming, keeping to myself, just trying not to be like a nuisance to society. So uh, I was at work. Uh, I was working inventory. And there was this guy at work that just kept bugging me about Black Lives Matter. And then he was like, why don't you support Black Lives Matter? And I'm like, bro, I, I just I just don't. It's not really a thing that I have to support. But he just kept bugging and bugging me and bugging me. And was this a black guy, white guy, Hispanic? He was white and he was a self-proclaimed uh, uh, communist. So I was like, I mean, I'm so so you had a white guy telling you why you as a black person were not supporting Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah, and I kind of got him a nervous because I'm like, I'm I'm just trying to do my own thing. I don't really care about politics. Like, leave me alone. Stop bothering my work. It turns out he was he wouldn't let me progress actually because I wouldn't agree with his ideologies. So he was that he was actually keeping me from moving up in my position. So it got to the point where I was like, okay, fine, I'm going to do my own research and I'm going to just keep working and put my head down. Uh, it got to the point where I started asking a bunch of questions on my Facebook page and I even screenshotted the, uh, the, the, some of the questions that I had posted them on my uh, political figure page because I'm like, these are the questions that led up to me becoming a conservative and everything else. I was like, uh, are there any conservatives on my page that I can talk to? I got a few questions I need to ask. I just needed to know like a few things about conservatism and what it's all about and why I shouldn't like Trump and how Trump people won in the first place. Like, cause again, people don't realize it, but I didn't like Trump until like his last two years, barely that. I was a Obama supporter for most of those years. Yeah, when Susanna was on the podcast, you're joking around that that you're you're probably even more conservative than she is. Yeah, people, but the thing is about that is I'm like I was raised Baptist, mm -hmm. so like any conservative thought I have are from all the Baptist learnings that I were like was raised off of. So like that's why I'm always confused when I hear people from like church communities talking about abortion and stuff. I'm like, we're already in Washington State, so abortion unless the Republican Party are the majority, that is a non-issue right now. We're focused on solutions, like, and revamping the solutions we already have. I mean, we look at adoption and conservatives still at that are the ones adopting the most kids, the majority of the kids. So, but we need to reevaluate some, some of the vetting processes, some of it, and on top of the fact, it's very expensive just to adopt on top of that. So, I mean, of course we need to vet the families that are trying to adopt. Uh, I understand that there are some of these uh, families might not be a good fit and might be misusing, mistreating these children. I get that. I know that even in some of these, uh, these facilities where the kids are being held, I mean, my brother, when he was held at one of these facilities, they were drugging him up during Obama's administration. And it's like it's un it's like it's understandable when these kids feel the, the emotions that they're feeling when they're being kept from their families, and their solution was to oh let's give them drugs to make them calm down, and I could see it in my brother's heart like in his eyes like him crying but yet he not really being able to express the emotion, like it almost broke me and that's one of the reasons why I was like okay I can't do it let me just go. Let me go so that my mom can figure out something without me being in the way. Can you talk about this? I don't think people realize this, right? Like, you might be a, we'll say, a, a Republican in Washington, but you're probably not a Republican in Texas, right? They're real conservative there. You might be a liberal in Texas. You're probably not a liberal in Washington. Can you have those different flavors of yeah. political parties everywhere? I, and that's funny that you say that because I try to explain that to people. I'm like, that's why the states are the way that they are in that they adopt the methods when they feel that they want to adopt the method. Like, if you don't like something, they tell you to go to a different state, you might like it there. That's because the Republican Party is not the same everywhere, and neither is the Democrats. Like, I can vibe with a good amount of Democrats out here. Some of them are not even actually Democrat. They just vote that way because they don't know the other options that are out there. 
And the Republican Party out here, unfortunately, is not good at presenting that message. Like the Democratic Party out here, like they're they're very good at getting that message out there, regardless of whatever it is. They're great at getting the message out there. I ran for office in the 27th on Hilltop. We didn't have a uh, we didn't have an overall message for abortion. And we would have thought that we would have had a slam dunk for a message regarding crime in a general area with all the crime that was happening during my campaign. I mean, there was a little 14 year old girl who got gunned down, gunned down during a gang retaliation during my campaign at that, just down the street from my house. And it's like, we didn't really have no representatives for that March that was there. So, I mean, people, we, they need, I mean, we need an overall message for these kind of things that we ever hope to gain any kind of foothold in these main these cities like Tacoma and Seattle. I mean, we need to have men underground doorbelling, getting information actually needed a whole day of people just door knocking in Tacoma, door knocking Hilltop, door knocking East Tacoma, actually getting in there and letting them know that we exist and we care. What do you think that is? Do you think like some Republicans in your district are like, well, there's no way we can win. Why waste the time? Or what do you think yeah, that exactly, is? That's exactly what it is. They feel that, like, oh, well, there's no way we can win. But it's like, you guys are barely, we're barely winning the districts that we can win in. And if we're barely winning those districts, then why do we think that the, the other districts would even try to adopt anything that we're talking about when, we, when we're not even going in and at least showing these areas like Hilltop, and the 28th, 29th, like, we're not showing them any kind of real love. Because it, there was a good amount of uh, endorsements in the 28th and compared to the 29th, and a good amount of door knocking compared to the 28th, compared to the 29th, and, like, both of them compared the same. Yeah, one thing that's a, a pet peeve of mine with the Republican Party of Washington is, like, I, I don't know when this happened, but a few years ago, when Governor Izzy ran for an election, but Republicans put against him some county sheriffs, some rural place in eastern Washington, right? And this guy, I want to say he's a crackpot. He's like far right, member QAnon, you know, all the kind of stuff. Like, you're not going to beat Governor Isley with someone like this, right? Like, can you just get the mayor of Spokane or like state representative? And like, this guy has no, no freaking chance, right? And it's like always like one of those candidates, right? And of course, he's probably like sure, probably a good person, you know, he have good beliefs, but man, like, how is a county sheriff from a rural district in eastern Washington going to compete with Governor Easley? I just, I, just, I just don't understand that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, it's Washington State at this point. It's, it's hard enough just to get somebody to run, let alone get enough endorsements to advertise this per these people running. Uh, my first, what, my first, they called it a MAGA drag. It was like, uh, was when a clip, clip, can't say his name right. I can never say his last name right, but uh, he was running for governor against uh, Inslee. Is this the one who got supposedly got caught shoplifting during the campaign or something about someone different? I don't know about that. Yeah, there's someone who was campaigning and like he got caught shoplifting supposedly. That's unfortunate to me. No, no. Uh, Platt was the one that uh, he wrote a book. I'm not sure. Probably something about something, something like different. Yeah, yeah, no, but uh, yeah, that was my first like actual event of like going to and experiencing like what they call MAGA supporters, mm -hmm. and like all I felt was a lot of love when I went to that event. I was like, man, I want to do this as many times as I can, so I did. And when I kept doing these events, surprisingly enough, somebody with a microphone always wanted me to give a speech or something or, or say with some of mine so those events were actually the first events that i was actually giving speeches for even like the we did a truckers rally back uh last year and uh i was helping with that as well as i gave a speech for that as well and, so, and did public speaking come naturally to you or were you always go to public speaking because no public speaking scares the shit shit out of most people uh i am an introvert and i don't really like to go up and speak to people but when it comes to being in front of a crowd it's a whole different feeling yeah i'm the I, same way i'm I the same way i don't have to focus on one person 
and uh, I don't know. It just it's a different feel. Yeah, for me, it's much easier for me to talk in front of like a hundred people, but I have to talk in front of two people. Man, I, I, it's hard for me to do. I'm much better with talking to hundred people. That you said. Yeah. Then I think my first time talking in front of like the actual Republicans were like was like at like a PCO meeting uh, in the 29th, I believe. So those were I, w- I started going to, th- to those meetings first in the 29th. So what is a precinct? Was it precinct county officer? What what uh, is that? Like? Precinct committee officer. What do they so do? We uh, pretty much help people get registered to vote. We help people who are running for office. Now, do you try to convert Democrats to Republicans? Uh, no, no, not at all. I mean, we we do door knock and uh, just get a good gauge of who lives there. Make sure that they still live there and figure out if they are Republican and or Democrat. Uh, we can talk to them, try to figure out why they vote the way that they do. But at the end of the day, I mean, I don't really think too many of us actually just convert people right at the door. Yeah, no, it's, it's a it's a long process, <clears throat> and uh, a lot of people are set on how they feel a lot of the times. I mean, when I was door knocking myself, personally though, when they didn't really know my party affiliation. They seem very interested in the fact that I was running. But when you throw the R there, it's just like, I respect and love representing the Republican Party, but if we keep the way that we're doing, it's always going to be more of a negative when I have the R next to my name compared to not having it. But I do enjoy having it. That's my, <laughs> it's like one of those, one of those things like, I, I love the Republican Party. <laughs> But it sucks that it's damaging me so much that people don't love us back. It's like we got to show that we love. We can't only be showing love to those areas that that we feel that we're safe in. Yes. So for the pricks officers, that's something you're elected to. You just raise your hand and say, "I want to do this." Uh, so uh, you, you uh, the uh, the chair, district chair, can uh, appoint you as a PCO. Or in or you can fill out paperwork. You go to our uh, district or uh, PCO meetings and uh, actually get fill out. If there's an open spot, you can fill that out to uh, fill that that seat. Uh, or if somebody's already in that seat, you could run against them. Uh, and this is a volunteer position, right? So no pay for it. Anything? Yeah, no pay. But how many hours on average do you spend per week doing this stuff? Um, well, we try to do training and we try to get our monthly meeting, but all in all, this is like something that you got to pit in yourself personally. Me, I'm more effective during the campaign season when we're doing the door knocking. I'm still like balancing that in the, the Virginia Taylor club as well. But, uh, on top of that, I'm more or less getting people informed about the position and what you can do within that position. That's why I talk a lot about it on TikTok and Facebook and all the other platforms that I'm on. So people are informed about what the position is and how to do it. So next, what is this Virginia Taylor Club? I don't think I've ever heard of it. I kind of knew what a precinct officer was, but I have no idea what this Virginia Taylor Club is. So... uh the Virginia Taylor Club is our outreach program out here. Um, we try to keep it separate from the political aspect of it, but essentially it is Republican, or the majority of us are Republican. <clears throat> We're trying to make an outreach to the community. So we in, we invite people who are of the community trying to make a difference or business owners, whatever the case may be, we have them come and speak to our members, keep them informed on things that's going on. We had a a woman at our last meeting, she was involved with anti-sex trafficking. And she came, spoke with us, and uh, informed us about all the things we could do to get more involved with helping to stop sex trafficking and everything else. So that was a very huge eye-opener for all of us. I definitely... I'm going to try to do more business with her personally. She already relayed a message to me telling me that she's very interested with me getting more involved with their group. So I'm very excited for that venture as well. So I looked up your campaign website from last year and you have on there your values, passion, integrity, and leadership. 
think about why, why those three things are important to you and why you came with those values. What is that? I'm gonna... um, so on your website, it says, um, passion, integrity, and, and leadership for your values. Can you tell me why you picked those values, why those are important to you? I mean, because I feel like those are steps to becoming a leader, not only for like the coma, but just for the country. I mean, there's not too much of that going around and everybody's like selling out their values and everything else for a title and power. And people like us that fall under the crap, the cracks were not really seen as anything but like a voting tool. So, I mean, we need politicians that actually care about their values and family have, they actually need to have integrity in what they do. I mean, most of these politicians don't actually value anybody else's family but their own. So when you became a Republican and um, how did your, your community react? Like, well, like, you know, what do you, you know, a lot of times black people become Republicans, so they're like, they're called, you know, sellouts, Uncle Tom's, all that kind of stuff. Did you have to go through that or were they more understanding? Uh, the only people I, I actually had problems with was like, weirdly enough, like some of the people in my family, like I, I got uh, called a few names, like I'm acting Uncle uh, Coonish or some stuff like that. But like people, they got over it. People in the streets, I mean, I be on TikTok a lot, so it's always a race issue. So it's mainly on like the internet where people really care and try to tell me, well, well, you're you're fighting on the side of racism and this and that. But I'm like, history is on my side. If I'm if we're gonna really be factual, we have a, a party that talks and says that we are trying to get rid of history, and we don't like to teach history. But yet, it's like me personally, I'm I'm for women's rights and everything else. But yet, nobody talks of the history of Margaret Sanger. And the fact that she believed in getting rid of Black folks and people with disabilities via Planned Parenthood. Nobody wants to talk about that. And how the fact that she pretty much did her job in that process because Black women, they get the most abortions. And how we ignored the fact that 98 percent of women that get abortions are just doing it just to do it it's like so where do you get these stats from like well we get these stats from them actually <laughs> Planned Parenthood gives us the stats so we just reuse their stats against them okay surprisingly enough right <laughs> so and Planned Parenthood it's, it's like a, a like a national nonprofit, isn't it or it's like state by state you have to know that yeah okay so I'm like, even when we provide the information that they're giving to us, people look at us like, oh, no, well, you're crazy. It's like, okay, well, again, it's illegal out here. So I'm not fighting on it. I'm just giving you. Yeah, it's never going to change the state of Washington. I'm just giving you the information that's there. This is a part of our history. And we're going to have to resolve that sooner or later, right? You know, so I'm like, I, it, it's cool. So next, next let's uh, compare. So I found this somewhere on you, and it said, um, "No, there's a big thing. You no, know, defend the police, all that kind of stuff." You, your thing was like refund the police. So you talk about refund versus defund the police. Well, me personally, yeah, I believe I I I know that the police has issues within my. I've, I've seen some of the things that we've had to deal with, but people will try to defund just because they don't see the terrible things happening in their areas where they live because they live in the nice cozy areas. So then areas like Hilltop will end up suffering when like something ends up going wrong. Hilltop wasn't defunded, but they did put in laws that made it very difficult for police officers to do their job. You're talking about the no pursuit law, like yeah, those kind of things. Yeah, exactly. Seattle, on the other hand, was defunded. They actually wanted to defund the police, what was it, more than 30 or 50%, but they ended up cutting it off at 17 once everything started to go into chaos. So it's like defunding the police definitely wasn't the, a good option. Pitting into police pursuit bills like that 
was completely uh, tragic for the Tacoma and crime has done nothing but go up. And we're hearing cases of even people who are child molesters getting away just because the police officers can't chase them down. Yeah, I think argument can be made, you know, like police officers need more training, more money, right? Like, I definitely think police officers need more de-escalation training, right? Yeah, Without of course, a doubt, right? Of course. Like, and, uh, and of course, like, you know, you know, you know, they got need to get rid of that blue, that blue line, right? What is it called, right? Because, you, you know, you will say the cop do something bad, they'll say, oh, just a few bad apples. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, because... So I think that's bullshit. It's like, it'll be hard to ignore the fact that, you know, there aren't bad people in every area yeah. like of- I, like i watched a, a car not a cartoon like a concert with the chris rock one day he's talking about the bad cops apple he's like bad apples like some some industry you can't have bad apples right like yeah if you're an airline pilot you can't have a bad apple right you can't like most of the pilots are good but like one or two like to crash the mountains you're like you well, can't have that shit in the, in the well, police force either they need more de-escalation training and that we need as a community to have like our police officers out not in their cars anymore, but actually walking the streets, getting to know the community again, like actually patrolling by foot in these communities that we feel actually need police, people, people contact. Yeah, because I feel like people just feel like they're being watched in a car by a police officer, even though he's just chilling there, minding his business. Mm-hmm. You know, he might just be, you know, just. Minding his business, but in reality, yeah. it's just like it's, it still feels unsettling to know that he's just chilling there. Just like I feel like we just need to have them out there again, actually involved. Like, I I know that they had a program that I, that they don't really do anymore. It was a it was like a a junior little. I know you're talking about a junior. I know you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, we need to get kids more involved with the police. Actually involved with the police so they know that they're not scary they're not here to like arrest us and we can actually change the image of how the police look within the community like not only do police need a little revamp but the community needs a revamp on how they feel about the police like how many times you've been in your car the next thing you know this cop's following you and like they're still following you two miles away is this a coincidence right you know you turn they keep on going but you're like in the car man what's this cop doing right yeah you know, I, you think like, I know I don't take this. I know I'm not speeding. Like, why is this guy right behind me, right? It's just a coincidence. But sometimes your mind, like, you know, plays tricks on you. Well, now, nowadays, I don't care because I already know, I know my law. I'm like, I'll just speed. Get away. <laughs> what you going to do, chase me? You going to chase me? Speeding ticket, huh? Nah, you're not going to chase me. You can't chase me. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, nah. another thing, too, like, I don't think there's any way you can change this, but, you know, like, you'll see, like, a, we'll say, I'll make this up, okay. Kai. You see somebody be a, be a, a police officer will say in um, Puyallup, but they live in Kirkland, you know? I mean, it seems like there's some kind of way where, like, you incentivize people would, like, live in the place you're a cop, right? I know that you probably can't do that, you know, but that seems like the one way to build community, right? And if, like, a cop lives in your neighborhood, you know who he is, and they live there, it seems like they'd be more, like, invested in your community being better versus, oh, I'll do this eight-hour beat, you know, here this place, I'll go home and, you know, forget about it. Yeah, you would you would want your the police officers that live in the area to be attached to that area that they're working like for sure. But again, it like I feel like the way we treat officers and the way that the persona the the way that we look at them and everything else, it's like of course they're gonna go in a good amount of them just gonna see it as a job at the end of the day. Yeah. Instead of seeing it as like something worth doing. Yeah. I mean, when I grew up, you know, everyone, you want to be a cop or fireman, you know, you watch TV shows like Streets of San Francisco, Adam 12, you know, I'm dating myself, you know, but all these TV shows, cop shows, like, I don't think anyone wants to be a cop growing up now, right? I mean. Uh, yeah, I was playing cops and robbers and I was a robber every single time. <laughs> I was like, yeah, nah, you could be the, you could be the popo. You choose a popo? Well, we know what you're going to be when you grow up. <laughs> Not my friend. <laughs> nah, yeah. It's very interesting childhood for me so i didn't really idolize the police like that matter of fact we we were raised to yell terrible things at the mm-hmm. police but at the same time i was also raised to yell terrible things at people who like were cross records and stuff like that yeah. too so i'm like that's stuff that i was raised in like my own community so growing up now like in being real ever since i became republican and conservative I'm more able to talk 
and uh, like actually conversate with people of the LGBTQ community than I ever was able to do before that. Like I never, if you want to, if you want to really think about it, I was more homophobic when I was on the side of the left than I was that when I ever came to the side of the right. What well, What do you think that is? Uh, cause okay, we were taught to vote a certain way, yes, but at the same time, we were also taught to stay within our own communities. So you might you might see, oh yeah, well, the Democrats are super progressive, but in reality, they're not because they teach segregation. In reality, even when we're even when we don't have segregation, they force you to think that you should still stay within that initial group. So it's like we thought a certain way as far as voting. And when it came to like different races of people, like it was crazy. It was like, as I got older and started to see that there's apparently a, a coalition of brown folks within like the, the black and Latin community. When I grew up, that wasn't even a thing. The, the black and brown folks, we fought against each other, especially during like the gang scenes. Like I was called monkey and all that stuff by by Spanish Americans. I've been racially profiled by Asian Americans, Indian Americans. Like, so I was like, all of a sudden now there's, there's this coalition all of a sudden against white folks, but I've been racially profiled by a lot of these other people more than I've ever been racially profiled by the white folks. What's going on? So, so how do you think you fix this? Like, I don't know. Of course, I'm trying to fix it, right? Because like, you you something happened more location and they're compared to something that happens in another location, right? And things are totally different, right? And like police officers are one way. Like example, in Odessa, Texas, where I grew up at, you only needed, you had to, only you had to do a six month academy, right? To become a police officer. All in Texas, you had to have a bachelor's degree in some kind of criminal justice, right? So how do you like even out all this training and, and, and things, right? I'm, I don't think we need a national police force. I don't definitely don't think we need that, but how do you make sure like some kind of equality, not equality, like some like evenness in training, right? I mean, or was that if, just a location if, preference? Are we talking about like as far as like education or just job training in general? Because I wouldn't want to sleep on a GED guy neither. I mean, That's... he might be one of the best uh, police officers we ever damn had in yeah. reality. So it's like, you know, I think just just overall training is needed. I mean, because everybody's gonna. So have who it. should be responsible for training each each location? It should be like some kind of statewide board, or like what, what do you think about that? I mean, statewide board would seem like it'd be a logical choice. But I mean, because they're still backed by the uh, unions and everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's... You know, that's a good point. People forget that police are very heavily unionized. So yes. people forget that. Yeah. So it's like, even with the board, they still have the unions and everything else. So it's like, we would have to actually do something about the unions before we ever did anything else to really just hold, like, to make cops feel like they are held accountable for a lot of the stuff that some of these people feel that they should be held accountable for on top of the fact uh i mean they're held by a constitution but the constitution is bound by the corporations so most people don't feel that they're bound actually to the people mm -hmm. but bound to like the mayors and everything else yeah so nobody really takes into account that they need to hold the mayors accountable as well, the mayors and whoever else may be. So it's like city officials mm -hmm. focusing on who your who your uh what is the word for it? Uh, sheriff is voting them out if they're not good. And that's one thing I don't understand, right? Like, how do you vote for a sheriff, right? Like it's not like that'd be like some kind of, I don't know, like, like. I don't know, like not a, not appointed, but like, how do you just dis like, you're going to let the sheriff, well, like, I don't get Seattle, that. Now. now they're allowing the mayor to appoint the sheriff now. Mm -hmm. So it's a political appointee now. So like that. So if you have a liberal mayor, you're going to get a liberal sheriff, which instead of having the best qualified should not be the case. Cause now you're picking a sheriff that will, it was already bad enough with all the control that the, that the mayor had during chop Chaz. Mm -hmm. And the fact that not, nothing got done. So it's like 100% the mayor's fault if things goes wrong now. Like everybody was blaming the police chief and this and that, but the police chief couldn't even really do her job because she had her hand tied behind her back and then she ended up leaving. She was not even a police chief for barely even a year or two. Yeah. And we won't give the fact, you know, the, the Seattle's a liberal place and they ran off a, a black female mayor. 
wait, black female mayor. I mean, black female chief of police. Uh, I yeah, mean, I was about to say, yeah, I know Tacoma. Yeah, they <laughs> they need to uh, do something. Yeah. Um. So next, also on your on your website for your campaign, you said that you uh, fully support arming law enforcement. What does that mean? Fully arming law enforcement. Uh, I mean, I believe that there's a lot of serious things that go on within law enforcement. They should be armed. Uh, their lives are in danger a lot of the times. I mean, uh, law enforcement, law enforcement last year, what was it? Uh, from when I looked up how many were uh, killed last year, there was about 314 plus that were cured, killed last year. And the amount of black, black folks that killed by law enforcement was around the same amount of numbers. And I'm like, okay, well, if black people are getting targeted, so are law enforcement in either case, that's still a problem. I believe we all should be armed. I believe we all should have a right to have a weapon and to defend ourselves. So uh, I definitely believe law enforcement should be able to be armed if that case may be. But at the same time, they definitely need training. Like that's a must, especially if you're able to shoot somebody and not be not get in trouble all too much for that because of your union. So push back a little bit. Like one time I just remember, like, I think there's a lot of like law enforcement out there, like small towns, whatever. They have like all the SWAT gear, right? Like, like I mean, that's like crazy, almost like arm, arm, army level stuff, right? Do they really need like army level stuff? Like, you know, like, I don't say machines, but you know, like the tanks, the all that kind of stuff. Isn't that too, too extreme? Yeah, yeah. I don't believe in militarizing the police force. Like again, I like think a lot I, of police force are militarized. Like, yeah, yeah. I I think that a lot of that is handed down via the military and everything else. So I'm like, uh, I'm like, yeah. I don't believe that we as the, I mean, as the police, they should have that kind of hardcore gear after just patrolling the everyday people you know maybe after doing the whole SWAT thing with and in, with infiltrating like the what's going on at the border mm -hmm. like we we actually have the cartel of mexico like aren't they going through a silent civil war right now yeah. like stuff like that <clears throat> like we've had cases where we found houses with hundreds of dead bodies buried because of the cartel like stuff like that maybe they might need that kind of stuff, but small towns and everything else. No, nah, I don't. I mean, know. I mean, the worst example was the uh, Uvalde. They had that school shooting massacre, like I think last year, and they had this like got all that SWAT equipment, all this militarization, yeah. and like still all the people got killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely was a, a problem with that situation. Uh, I don't think anybody approved of that situation at all. No, and, and, and another thing too, like you know, so San Francisco. I'm pretty sure it's accurate. They voted to authorize uh, the like law enforcement robots to have lethal force, right? I'm like, so you want these robots to have lethal force? Like, what? Are you kidding right now? And you're supposed to like the most liberal city in the United States. You would think they would like no way vote for that. They vote to have like give law enforcement robots authorized legal force. Wait, they were robots, but then they look at us like we crazy when uh, I don't think I could trust a robot to do that. I know. I mean, that's a whole different. I don't even think I can speak on behalf of robots. I know how a human feels, <laughs> but who's going to justify that? You know, I mean, you might have a coding that, glitch, AI glitch. I mean, at that point, then you leave for no real person to be blamed, but malfunction error. So yep. you're going to blame the company. They're probably going to have the company that made the the, the robot most likely going to have like a way of getting out of those kind of situations. Mm -hmm. A bunch of lawyers after that. So it's really. Whoever ends up suing, they're just going to end up taking money yeah. from our tax dollars, most likely. So exactly. Th there's no win-win. So um, what's your take on psychedelics? Uh, I mean, I'm a Washingtonian. I believe that uh, as long as you're of age, you should be able to do. Some people would say that I'm probably libertarian when it comes to psychedelics. Mm -hmm. Because libertarians, every time they hear me talk about it, they're like, man, you, you should be a libertarian. I'm like, you should... Wait, maybe one day. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know psychedelic is legal in pretty much everywhere in the United States, but like there's all the research out there saying, you know, actually helps you with the depression, PTSD, mental health, you know, I mean, and like, and like really well known doctors are doing this research. 
Well, I feel like uh, drugs are going to continue to come through our borders. So why not us take it ourselves, regulate it, and make sure that we can at least have some kind of control over it? I mean, it would take money away from the cartel and everything else. Me personally, I feel like we could do a lot more regarding the cartel, but until then, we can at least try to do something within our own borders to try to curb that situation, especially with the fentanyl crisis. That's that's ridiculous. I was like, I mean, like the heroin and fentanyl, especially in Seattle, is like it's, it's so crazy. Like you'll see people out on the street that's, that's like doped out, cracked out. What are the what are the phrases, right? You see people like laying the ground, like after effects. You know, like you, you like they did things in the news for people like smoking fentanyl on the city buses. I was on bus one time from a from a from Lakewood up here one time, and this dude, I swear to God, took off his shoes and shot up heroin at the bottom of his feet on the bus. And of course, the driver can't do anything because like we're on the highway, we can do drop, stop, and kick him off. You know, I guess that's probably what he should have done, right? But yeah, it's it's insane. I mean, fentanyl like and and heroin like I'm sure there'll be some other crazy drug coming pretty soon that we haven't even heard about yet. Yeah, there's gonna. I feel like as long as. Uh people need and want regarding drugs that they're always going to have a market i mean the pharmaceutical already figured that one out that's why we're constantly getting hit from all sides regarding if it's not like pharmaceutical drugs it's a vaccine mm -hmm. so i mean they're winning regardless at this point yeah i know you start with the moderna moderna or what have you said an increase in the price for the covid vaccine like 100 percent or something i would have to do my research on that but yeah i wouldn't doubt it I mean, you see what the crazies tried to do with the, what was it, the uh, insulin shot, mm -hmm. and then he ended up going to jail. So it's like money is power and greed, yeah. especially when the pharmaceutical companies. So back to psychedelics. So it's not like you're pro-psychedelics. How does that help you or hurt you with the Republican Party? Because most people come like they're anti-drugs, right, or anti-whatever. How does that play you for you? Like how you I, balance that? I have to gently remind them that, you know, um, we, we plead, we, we always talk that, uh, okay, we're, we're for freedom of speech. We want to be free as Republicans. We don't want nobody to cripple us. But then it's like, we also have a high incarceration. We don't really focus on mental issues. Like, it, it wasn't that long ago where they looked at marijuana at a bad light, but in reality, marijuana has helped not only people who were former military, but people who were in sports as well. And not only that, correct me wrong, but I don't know how any fights that started because someone is so high, right? Yeah. Most yeah. fights are you're fucking on drinking bourbon, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And on top of the fact, I'm like, uh, we think so. We talk down on a lot of things, but yet we still allow alcohol to be legal. And how many alcohol deaths have we had? Yeah. every year DUIs, people are killed yeah Liver, like people dying from liver liver disease what the case may be so yeah that's what i'm saying it's like we would be better off legalizing and regulating these things instead of criminalize criminalizing people just for, for possession and things like that let them go home and do what they please at home at the safety of their home you know, I mean, I'm all for people who are of age doing these things, whatever they want to do. I don't really like to be in people's homes telling them how they should live if they're doing it responsibly at that. Yeah. So one thing I have a, a, a problem with, like you have like some states, marijuana is legal, right? Like Washington, Oregon, I think California, Colorado, other places, right? But you still have like so many people in jail for like simple marijuana cases, right? Like less than a gram, whatever. Like to me, like, it seems like I'm a Chris can make people do whatever, but like if you're like a, a cannabis company making lots of money, it's like you should be doing something to get these people out of jail, right? Or doing something like make it better, right? Instead yeah. of making a profit. Yeah, and uh, they say that the uh, the the marijuana cartel is is controlled dominantly by a lot of uh, Democrat representatives. So it's like as soon as that it, it got legalized, they were able to make a lot of money off of it. Meanwhile, people got left in jails in order to figure out that once they got out, marijuana is legal and that the very people that they locked that locked them up because of these charges are now making bank. Yes. And I'm like, 
Because even I, like when they legalized it, I was like, oh, yes, I'm going to start selling. I'm going to do that. I'm like, no, nah, you got to go to the Washington Cannabis Board and all this kind of bureaucratic yeah, stuff. And it was not turning out the way I thought. I was like, I'm going to give me a license and everything. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. The dope man in the corner thought, man, I'm legit now. Not so fast, young dude. Yeah. No. Then I was like, okay, what's the legal amount I can grow in my house? <laughs> So, yeah, I know one thing I crazy about marijuana, like all the options, right? Like it's like it's just I mean, it's like overwhelming for most people, right? At least for me, it is, right? Like it, it, smoke this, you want to feel, you know, energetic. Smoke this, you want to go to sleep. Smoke this, you want to do that, you know? It's like I just wanted to get something that would make sure I don't get locked up. It's like, <laughs> it's like that's all. Like remember when you got locked up, you don't know more. Why you got all these thousand options with all these thousands of names? I'm like, I'm a simple person, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I went to San Francisco to do, to do some business there. So it was this friend of mine took me to this uh, marijuana dispensary downtown. And like, I was blown away. You go, you go on an iPad. What mood are you in? What do you want to feel like? You know, how much you want to smoke? What's your budget? Like, dude, what, what in the world is going on here? My experience going to LA was different. <laughs> it was scary. It was in the middle of the night. There was supposed to be security at the door, but he was not there. And then when I got in, they were like, oh, did the security let uh, give you the information? I'm like, no. And I would like for this to hurry up because I feel like this might be the next place to get hit. <laughs> yeah. Because you think your security is out there and he's not. <laughs> yeah, this place, San Francisco, we were there like two in the afternoon. It was like a, like basically like a, 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 like a, like a high, fancy, sedity wine lounge, right? Expensive wine. There's one type of place, right? It is it blew me it blew me right like yeah this has come a long way yeah when uh, it got legalized in Seattle it was pretty wild there was a lot of pop up uh, house dispensaries all over the place try, just hoping to God that they would be regulated enough to not get shut down and they were never regulated enough to not get shut down so we'd always need to keep finding new spots so do you think marijuana will be be legalized at the federal level or or two part question. What do you think happened first? The federal government legalized it or all 50 states to legalize it first? I think uh, it would probably take a few more states before the federal government will legalize it, but I don't think it'll take all of the states. If it did, that'd be pretty, at that point, that'd be pretty sad. Because it's like, okay, don't get... Yeah, I think Virginia just legalized it. Of course, I could be wrong. I think, I, I remember hearing after Virginia, like one of these real conservative states in the South, that's le- about to legalize it or they're about to going to really legalize it i mean all these old people are figuring out all the health benefits that comes with marijuana i care about the health the old people yeah my grandma she smokes marijuana all the time I like um know. what's that dude's name uh man i can't think of his name but uh he has a show on pbs where i like, travel all these european countries he lives up in edmonds <sighs> you know what i'm talking about right um, he like goes to france italy south america has his travel show on PBS. Man, I can't think of the, I can't think of the name. I get out of it now. But he's talking about, you know, how like he's pro marijuana. He like, my grandmother smokes it every day. And like, he just like, he has a soul spill. Like, how can you be against it? It does so much good for, like you said, old people, right? Yeah, yeah. And plus you. And what are you going to do? Arrest grandma? Get the and, fuck out of here. Plus, a lot of times it's a lot better than giving them these opioids. Yeah. Yeah. Even my, like my mom, like when my brother was coming back from my, uh, uh, it's called Rither's. Uh, sad place. Um, when he came back from there, he was like, they were still trying to prescribe him like the medication and the pills. And those pills were so, so strong and crazy. And my mom was like, forget this. I'm just going to allow him to smoke marijuana instead of taking these pills because they're like having him like look crazy. And he would just look like he was there, but not really there. So it's crazy. Yeah. I've said this before, like, I can't speak. I, I, I don't know every veteran, but I, I'll make this number. I say like 95% of the veterans I do know either smoke marijuana, do psychedelics, or do something like that. Muslims or something, you know, versus doing the opioids thing. Because opioids, like, yeah, did not work for veterans. Yeah. I, I mean, we talk about this kind of stuff regarding like uh, TikTok sometimes, but it's hard to know what to talk about on that app because with all the commotion going on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, they're trying to shut down TikTok, but I'm like, that's like literally the only app right now that's allowing us as conservatives to have a voice. And, and TikTok, like, you know, people, oh, TikTok's trash. Those like teenage girls dancing butt naked. 
that's on every freaking social media app, right? Thing I like about TikTok is like there's so much information. Like I follow this one lady, she's an astrophysicist. I learned stuff from her. There's one dude, like he's like 80 years old. He's a psychiatrist. He does daily psychiatry tips. So there's so much information I, on there that that's good. I, I feel like I have not seen like teenage girls on there. I mean, I see a lot of older women on there that do a lot of stuff, but I'm like, ah, I mean, that's to be expected. But I feel like there's a lot more that we should fear when it comes to all these other groups making new pages because now all these kids are going to start gravitating towards all these newer pages to try to find a place of like a place to express themselves yeah and then they're not going to be able to regulate all of them all the time and it's going to continuously be this process of them finding like children on yeah. these apps like how they did with tiktok mm -hmm. so i'm like it's just going to be that over and over again every time because it's not like we're outlawing any kind of services for China. No, no. And it's like, you know, people talk about China's you know, having our data. Yeah, it's a concern, but like, you don't think Facebook's doing that? Yeah. Don't and think all these, that, every, every social media platform, every, every website tracks your data with cookies and pixels. Like, yeah. there's no such thing as privacy anymore. And, and people don't understand that. And I'm like, okay, at this point, people are like, oh, we don't want China to have our, our data. This and that. I'm like, all right. But we also have the American government that has control over a lot of our stuff as well and i don't trust the government just as much as i don't trust china when it comes to my stuff and my personal data because it's already been proven that they like to meddle in our affairs and that why else would they want to go to the digital currency when it comes to our funds because that's another way for them to control us and shut down our money when we need it I mean, it's already proven that most of our money is not, especially when you have when you have billions of dollars, you won't be able to get all of those billions of dollars out in haste. You have to wait a process because physically, it's not there. Yeah, I know a lot of people who will argue that the whole money system just made up is like, you know, just, you know, it's a trust system like it's really not there, you know, I know a lot of people believe that. And then um, back to TikTok, I know a lot of people like, you know, TikTok goes away, how we're gonna do, but for people who don't know this, I mean, all you gotta do, if, if even they do ban TikTok, I'm not not recommending you do this. I'm not giving you advice, but like if they do ban TikTok, it's a simple process. Like change your IP address and yeah, do a VPN. I, you know, I, I, that's what I was joking. I was joking around earlier. I'm like, well, if they do get rid of TikTok, I'll probably get even more followers because I'll just change my VPN and everything yeah. else, and then I'll be the American that has TikTok in the area that is. That yeah. I'm not supposed to have it. Yeah. So and what like, I, so I put on, on Twitter, like somebody said, what's going on with TikTok? What do you think? I, I, I've worked, you know, while I'm just going to change my VPN AP address. People are like, how do you do that? Is it easy as hard? Like, you know, I, I have a tech job, so I think it's, you know, it's normal to me. Like, like most Americans have, have an idea what a VPN is, IP address, right? Yeah. And it, it's not hard. Like, you don't have a PhD, right? You just Google I, it, right? And change it. A lot of our, a lot of our guys on TikTok will get, uh, ban uh ip ban and stuff like that so they have to figure out how to do a lot of that because tiktok of course doesn't like a lot of the super outspoken guys mm -hmm. i've had to learn how to word a lot of the stuff that i say sometimes it slips but it's like it's one of those things where it's like it's the internet it, on one hand you want to show professionalism on the other hand, there's like sometimes some people just need a hard lesson of just like, listen, like wake the hell up. Like this is real life. And if you don't take it seriously, you're going to be failing the next generation. Who's someone you follow on TikTok that you, that you really like that you follow on TikTok? Huh? Who's someone you follow on TikTok that you really like to watch their videos? Um... I mean, I got my my general people that I that I hang with in my lives. AJ's rant room, snacks, Keisha. She she's actually uh she's a chair out here in Seattle, a Republican chair. Uh so it's like we 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 do a lot of lives together. I watch their contents, they watch they watch my content. Uh I don't really have like a TikTok. I mean, there's already people that I already knew about that I wasn't really watching on TikTok that I already know about. 
like the Hodge twins. I found out about them. I was actually able to meet uh what was his name? Um uh what is his name? Joel Patrick's. So I met him on TikTok. I mean, he's an interesting character. Uh uh Bryson Gray. We I, we follow each other on TikTok. Like he's interesting. I'm not sure how much we would vibe all too much seeing how he believes in like people being like true Christians. And I'm not really super religious like that. So I don't know how much we would vibe, but I still respect him, you know? And then uh, like, yeah, I mean, the, the Hodge twins and Terrence Williams, they shared a lot of my content on Facebook. So, I mean, I got kind of acquainted as far as like Facebook with the Hodge twins on Facebook. Okay. And then Terrence Williams and Lee, uh, CK Pearson, they shared my stuff without tagging me. So it kind of messed up. Does that piss you off? But like, they don't tag you? Like, Yeah, because it didn't tag me, but Facebook still knew who I was. So it shadow banned me in my, in my, in my video, got rid of my video in their videos. Oh, wow. yeah. So next, let's talk about um, education. Let's talk about parental rights versus teachers, right? Like you have one side that say, no, I'm a parent. I know what's best for my kids, you know, and you have teachers like, no, I know better. Like I want one thought you can say, like, you know, if the parent is like, you don't have like, not to sound bad, or whatever, but you have a parent has like no education, has a G, didn't know, has like no minimal education. How are they going to tell like a teacher who's like has a PhD or master's not to teach that kid like, like um, evolution or psychology, right? Or biology, right? But I mean, that's to be a balance, right? How's that? How do you, what's your feelings on that? How do you work that out? Um, I'm, I mean, like, I believe that when you want your child to go to school, you want them to learn anything, right? I mean, as far as like to advance their education, some people feel that some things won't really advance their children's education and they have every right to feel that way. Uh, I'm not one to tell a parent how to parent because I believe that we are the parent, regardless of us being wrong or right, that is our right as parents to say no to certain aspects of our children's lives, regardless of it being right or wrong. Uh, you're a teacher. My child goes to that school. I expect them to learn the basics, which, regardless of, I mean, as far as that going, like if they're not learning or progressing in the basics, all the other stuff really doesn't matter to me. Like if we're failing in math, reading, and writing, then I could care less about my kids trying to figure out the teacher's pronouns. So it's like, as Americans, we're not really doing that great regarding education. In Tacoma, Washington, the education is terrible. Uh, I mean, I was scared to the point where my kids go to school in Seattle. And I hate, I don't really like Seattle, but I prefer for them to go to school in Seattle compared to Tacoma, because I mean, even Tacoma complains that there's better options that I did that. So, if you were able to like to have the power, what is one subject you would say has to be taught in school? Um, one subject that has to be taught in school, uh, definitely math is very important. I mean, it definitely helped me understand a lot of things. Math is especially during the tech world, math is very important. Figuring out how to count, math is important. Following the money, math is important. You know, it, it has helped us out with figuring out what some of these uh, politicians are doing regarding our funds when you follow the money. Yeah, we won't be in space without math, all the formulas they did for that. Yeah, exactly. Telephones, math. So it's like, that's very important. But like, again, like I said, the basics, uh, everything is important reading re learning how to write in cursive that's very important you know uh, a lot of our important documents were written in cursive if these kids don't know how to write or read in cursive then anybody can interpret these documents however they want and these kids will be like oh yeah well that's the way it was interpreted you see this guy did it for us we don't have to read it if he did this and that's the that's been the case for a lot of things for us so far so so is there a way to, I mean, how do you word this? Like, is there a way do you think I could fix low teacher pay? A lot of people complain that you don't get paid enough. Now, let me push back on what I just said. Like, 
like even like high school or elementary school, college, people are like, you know, teachers don't get paid enough, right? But then again, they pretty much have all the summer off. At least I think they do, right? So is it really, are they low paid or is like, they only get paid for nine months of the year? And what would you, what would be the solution to this? Yeah, I, I feel like they're not, they're not working all of those years. So of course, like, and I, and I get, you know, that, you know, the class might be from nine to three and they have to spend time to get ready for it and great papers. I know I get all that, you know, but. I, I believe that the schools should be longer. And uh, yeah, I believe that the kids should be, I mean, the teachers should be able to get paid more. Uh, we, as Americans, our kids like barely go to school in reality. Yeah. So it's like. And if you are in school, you know, someone's just up, just up from class, you know, you know, like you're in class for 50 minutes, but how many minutes are you actually learning? And then of course, school is like, like for the lowest denominator, right? If you're like really a superstar, really smart, you know, and if like, you're like, I think it's, it's school is like, you know, it's very for like the middle, like the lowest denominator, right? Like the person who causes the trouble all the time, teach the focus on them. We're like, if you're like super smart, you get no help. You just average, you get no help, right? Yeah, I uh, definitely, it was a, they had me in uh, ESL, English second language, because I had a surgery on my tongue and I couldn't really speak. So I had to like relearn English and everything else. So it was like, at first people see me as, oh, well, he just, he's not that smart. Mm -hmm. But then after I picked up on how language worked and how to read and everything else, then it was like, okay, you know, maybe I was causing trouble in class because I just was frustrated with the way I had to learn everything. So it's like a lot of these kids, they have problems that like, most people won't really focus on so that they're just getting brushed away. Yeah. Pushed to the side. So it's like disrupt. I see a lot of people that get mad at these kids that cause a lot of disruption, but yeah, we never really try to figure out the root cause for these, these distractions. And you know, that, that kind of cause is why like I do, I think real deep into my own community because like with fatherless homes and everything else, a lot of people try to look for that family structure. And that's how I got drawn into the gang life because me trying to look for that father figure and me trying to really be a part of something. And then the fact that the educational system was kind of failing me as a child, they put me on gang probation right after I won student of the month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, gang probation. <laughs> Evergreen High School. They put me on gang probation. I don't mean to laugh, but damn. Right after I became student of the you month. Can't, you can't make that shit up. And I was, I was actually, I was on the robotics team at the time as well. So yeah, I was on the robotics team while on gang probation. And the only reason for that was the fact that I was sitting in a hallway with two girls just chatting. Some guy kicked me in the face when I wasn't looking. And then the school was afraid that my family was going to re retaliate. So their thing was, let me, let us pitch you on gang probation. So then that way your family won't retaliate. So what's your take on this, right? And I, I'm on both sides. So like, so schools are funded by property taxes, which means, of course, if you like, let's say you live in Bellevue or Kirkland, we'll, just, we'll say Redmond, right? All the marks up your law. No million dollar homes, more taxes, more resources. Live in Central District in Seattle or Hilltop Tacoma, houses are not as expensive. That's property taxes. So, you know, so obviously people in Bellevue and Redmond have advantage over Hilltop and Central District, right? Like, how do you, like, I'm not, I'm not saying, I don't think we need like some kind of like pot social just pilot where like everyone has an equal amount of money, but like that's just an unfair advantage, right? Like is there a way to fix that? Or is it like, what do you think? That I would have to do more research on. I don't have all the answers for it. And that's my political answer for that. I ain't going to give you an answer if I don't actually know <laughs> all too much, but I do know that, I mean, I bought my house for 93K. Yeah. You know, at all the surrounding houses were well over 300K before yeah. my house. But 300K out. there, and then you'll say Redmond's like at least a million dollars, right? So yeah, this, yeah. And, and in addition to that, right, you we'll say Redmond, right? You probably have like you no know, two parent homes, you know, 
both parents are probably working on Microsoft or Amazon, but, making six figures. But even still, where someone in Hilltop is like, you know, the Central District, the houses in the Central District are now worth well over a million dollars. That's true. So it's like, or maybe Seattle's a bad, bad example of this. Maybe we move an example somewhere else. But you get the general idea of what I'm yeah, saying. I, I get what you're saying, but it's just it's like, yeah, time plus they're all going to end up, especially in the general city area, is going to end up eventually reaching that amount, especially when they get rid of the houses and start building more apartment complexes. Yeah. Uh, the best case scenario would be to stop building apartment complexes, re, re, revamp the houses, and actually try to make sure that people can live in these homes. But like and stop continuing to build apartment complexes. It's proven that apartment complexes that like the the families in that live in those don't really they don't really value the community as much as people yeah. that live in homes. Yeah. So it's like I feel like the more that they destroy the houses, obviously the more that the value is going to go up for the other houses. So it's going to be an endless cycle of that until they run us out and end up building multi home duplexes. That will eventually also cost close to half a million just to live in. Yeah. So I want to go back home on this oh, for a minute, but first and other question, right? How do you think we fix this, right? So not talking about race, but economics, right? So you have one one family, the middle class, both parents, you know, have like pretty decent jobs, right? That kid goes, that kid goes to college, that's, doesn't have to pay for any college, everything's free, right? You know, parents take care of them. Other scenario, you know, kid comes from a single parent household, you know. Not on work, but kind of, you know, kind of poor, like they're struggling, right? So the kid from the middle class with two parents, they can probably like take a year off from school, do a gap year, work for a startup, you know, uh, do their own thing, right? And then, you know, work for a startup and potentially, like, you know, hit it big, right? Maybe work for Facebook, Amazon, where the kids be like, you know, really, or maybe start his own company, like, you know, get venture funding, whatever. The other kid, like, man, like he has to get a job. Like he can't take a year off. He can't like work for a startup. He can't, you know, potentially like experiment. He needs a job to scare his family. Like, is there any way to fix this? Because I think it's a big gap, right? Because like these people on the one side, they have more opportunities that know, I won't say get rich, but like this, like do better stuff, do cooler stuff, like experiment. Other kid, like, man, like this is your life, right? Don't get me wrong, this little kid, like, you know, had a college degree, probably make $18,000 a year. I mean, don't that's a good life, right? But like, to me, it's just like, man, just, I won't say it's unfair or what it is, right? Yeah. And that's why I believe, like, as far as the education goes in school, we could definitely add in trying to educate these kids on the future. Like me personally, it wasn't until I went to Evergreen where I figured out that they had a robotics team that really made my mind think, oh, okay, well, I can do something better. Like the robotics program at Evergreen was eye-opening for me because they were teaching me how to build skyscrapers and teaching me how to blueprint and teaching me how to uh, 3D print. Like, when you don't have those kind of things in front of kids, you don't really know the future. So a lot of these people aren't really looking towards the future until it's too late. Like we got to start them off young when it comes to these kind of things, put them in, uh, put them in like home ec, like have them ready for the future. Even if they only have a, a single parent household, like that's why I'm like, okay, if we're going to pay teachers more, we also need to provide more for these children and not give them a bunch of stuff that's going to confuse them and have them ultimately never ready for the world and continuously working in warehouses where they're going to be essentially slaves. Yeah. Uh, you, you know what TAF is, right? That's school out of federal way. What is that? Again? TAF. TAF. Uh, technology, something. It's, it's like a tech school out of federal way. Um, I can technology, I've asked and form something like that. I believe I've heard of something out there along that lines in federal way, but no. So I used to volunteer there. And one time we were like judging a hackathon, right? These are like eighth graders, right? These eighth graders had the idea of charging your phone on your skin, use electricity in your body, right? We're like, oh shit, like, wow, that's like a, that's a million dollar idea. Well, they got, they got the, the ones where you can pretty much unlock anything. You yeah. Can, like, but then the next week, those, that kid was disenrolled from TAF because it's going through some family matters, right? Some family issues, right? So you can't do the hackathon anymore, right? Like how many kids like have great ideas and just if had a little bit of encouragement that could do something, but how many of that, how bad could the circumstances? 
Yeah, it was, like I said, Evergreen was a it was a good and bad. So, like they handled certain things great, and then they completely handled things terribly. Like the the student, the parent student conference, they asked me, "Oh, what teachers uh have impacted you more? So, what teachers help you?" I told them which teachers helped me or talked to me or helped me out. And then all of a sudden, those teachers weren't allowed to like socialize with me like that anymore. So I was like, okay, now I'm feeling outcast because not only do I feel outcast, the fact that I'm a like I'm a gang member that's going to school and not really feeling like I feel in, in a real place. But now the teachers that I actually I like were being told that they weren't allowed to be close teachers and they need to, I guess, focus on the other kids more. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. Let me go back to selling drugs in school. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll show you, All right? So, yeah. so, so, so back to home ownership, right? Cause like, home ownership, I think, as they're going lower and lower. I think what people are like, there's a lot of corporations like actually buying homes, right? And like, yeah. and they bring them out. You know, that's the big thing. Like, I get an email once a day from some company, like, so let me sell your home, right? And like, I don't know, free market at all. And like, it's like, it's like you're like a young person. Like, it's almost impossible to buy a house, right? Like. Yeah. Uh, I mean, does the government need to step in? Like, of course, they don't do that because the free market, like, it's just the prices are like ridiculously high. And like, for like, example, my home, it was like, a, my, my wife's going to kill me for saying this. We bought the home at like 350000 right? Last year was like almost $700,000. Like, that's an insane amount, right? I have, like, I have a friend lives in, um, I think, Buren, right? His house, are, like, it has a carport, 1,500 square feet, not in a best neighborhood. It's so decent. Worth like eight hundred thousand dollars, right? And that is not eight hundred thousand at home. But like, and he'll tell you too. Like, he, he still has like original green kitchen stuff in it, right? And like, it, it's out of control, right? But like, I don't know. Like, I think it's a tough one. Yeah, I think again, it all stems from like keeping people informed. Because at the end of the day, like, we don't really know until it's too late. I mean, we had lived this carefree lifestyle as kids, especially in single parent households. Cause like me personally, I didn't see myself as getting famous or like being known. So like college and that was like the last thing in my mind. And then once it became the fact where it's like, okay, this is real. I really got to look for a job. It's like you take any job that's available to you at that point. And me personally, I couldn't even do that. My my name is uh actually Baby Doe. So my my I was I didn't exist for 24 plus years. So that was one of the the struggles that I had with finding a job because they wouldn't even hire me. And then my even my social security name was spelled wrong and that didn't end up getting fixed until trump was elected so it, there was a lot holding me back but i never chose to blame anybody i just figured well different strokes for different folks i'll get through it this will be a funny story to tell in the near future now i'm telling people but my funny story and how i'm how I, I mean technically if you think about it i was never married if you think about it. my name is baby doe <laughs> So <laughs> that's so funny. Um, let's talk about taxes, especially gas taxes. I know you want to, it's up to you, you'll load gas. gas yeah. Right. And one thing I don't think most people don't realize that the money you pay for gas, I'll make this number because what, at least a third of it is like taxes, right? Like federal government tax, state taxes. Gas is actually like not hardly priced, right? It's just a tax they add on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how our, our governments, at like the states, can actually regulate some of that as well. So it's like, uh, you know, people get super mad at the president. Yes, we can get mad at him. But at the same time, we have to get mad at our at the at our state representatives as well, because they can help at least ease some of what's going on for us. And now I'm noticing that gas is going down. But at the same time, I know the price we're paying for it going down. And what they're adding to our gas in order for it to go down, so it's going to be more harmful to our uh, our cars in the near future. So, you know, this push for electric cars, they're definitely trying to push for that. And 
we're not really stable enough to handle going full electric. I, I see y'all, I see people looking at California and which is weird considering California and their failing grids when it comes to like electricity and power. Yeah, I, I mean, I read this, I know it's the truth, but I read somewhere like, you know, like how the grid is, you're gonna really have like one Tesla each, each block one neighborhood because everyone has a Tesla, like the grid would break. I, mean, I have no idea if that's true or not, you know, but you know. I don't know if it's true, but I mean. I mean it makes sense, I mean. But then again, you know, I mean, suppose Tesla like, uses like so much, like, doesn't really lose that much electricity. You charge it up, you know. So and the amount of hours it takes just to charge that one when you're at home, mm -hmm. that's like a long time. So it's like you you you, you would never really want to drive far distances, and that's really impossible when you live in like a lot of people that live in Tacoma work in Seattle, yeah. and a lot of people who work in Seattle work in Tacoma. I mean, you would think someone as smart as Elon Musk would have figured that problem out and like did something with that. I don't, I mean, I'm a big Elon Musk fan, so I don't know. I, I just hope that, you know, like, if that's something that he didn't think about, forget right. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like we could get better alternatives, but we definitely can't go full electric. On top of the fact, we still need. <laughs> oil for a lot of these things regarding electricity. yeah that kills me too like people like you know go all electric get rid of oil like where do you think electricity comes from yeah yeah so it's like we wouldn't even essentially get rid of oil it would no. just be and of course they more, say another thing yeah of course they electric you no know, there's no more carbon from the cars and stuff i get that but you still need oil to make electricity and that's not going away and, and the batteries that we yeah. use to create we're literally destroying mountains in order yeah. to and we want to talk about um all the people and like that. I can't. Remember, there's an African country where they mine the mineral for the lithium batteries, yeah. and so they did a special on that. Where like you know, basically like it's, it's slave labor, right? It's like yeah, it's probably worse than slave labor. It's like horrible conditions, you know. Yeah, we're definitely in order to please Americans. But we, we no, we don't look at that. We, we, we that ignore the slave labor that is making us happy. But then, but watch out for that data. Yeah, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, don't don't steal your data. Everybody yeah. cares about the data, but not the, the people that are making your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about something that was not good for you. You had a car accident on the day of your election, right? Uh, it was a few days after the election. After the election, okay. Yeah, it was. Uh, so you lost the election, and then you had an accident. That, that had to be like, it wasn't a good time in your life. I have to imagine. Can you talk about that? How you got over that? Um, you know, I I was driving home from work like literally it was like my last day of work and I was getting ready to get ready to start grabbing the signs and I was a split second of looking away because I seen that somebody did something with my sign somebody ended up doing a brief stop because they went to make a quick turn so I couldn't really respond fast enough for that naturally my fault just quick look but definitely was an eye opener for me personally i'm like oh man just that slight look away could put you in this situation is like could have been a lot worse mm -hmm. so you know yeah because your truck was pretty fucked up yeah, it was, yeah. i mean i'm like man like so you want not hurt anything or yeah luckily for me i wasn't hurt nobody was hurt if you look at the truck, you're like, damn, like somebody might have died in this shit. That and like, and like, crazily enough, my truck was the only thing that looked bad compared to everybody else's like vehicle because I hit them from the back. So their bumper was pretty sturdy compared to my truck. Mm -hmm. So it was, it sucked. You know, I learned from it very more aware. I'm not looking at any more campaign <laughs> when I drive. <laughs> so, nice. you know. um, so on your going back to your campaign website, on a statement you have in there, I believe that our state government should return all liberty liberty to its citizens. What does that mean? Like, what? I mean, and first of all, like, how does the government take your liberties from you? Right? Don't, aren't your liberties yours all the time, or, or could government actually take I mean, away? You think that like you have like you have all your rights as a as a citizen, but it feels like that hasn't been the case for us, especially as parents like to have the freedom to just to like freedom of religion like the house rep that i ran against she made it so that we weren't allowed to speak jesus name on the house floor i mean that's against our right of religion right there 
So it's like, we should be free. And it seems like that's another thing. Just being a straight white male seems like you're not even allowed to be that. Or at least I'm not even allowed to be happy to be that. Like, you can't be happy to be yourself. You have to bend the knee in order to feel, to to make other people happy. Did you see a thing? Um, it was somewhere where um, this teacher actually got in trouble. At least I think he did. Well, I think it was a college class. He made all the white people in the class bow down to black oh, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's for that. forgiveness for being white. I've seen that. Yeah, that was, uh, there's a lot of TikToks like that, really. Like, I've seen a whole group of uh, white kids lifting up the one black kid that they had. And they were like lifting him up like he was like a pharaoh or something, walking him into class with Black History Month. Like, it's like little skits like that. And then you look in the comment section. And people were like, oh, yeah, they're just having fun. Huh? I'm like, they're, they're making a joke out of things that they shouldn't. And it's like, me, I'm a, I'm a realist, all right? I, I know that there are a good amount of people that have moved to America that are melanated, but they're not American Black or they're first generation American. So it's like, for them to come to America and then scream, oh, racism, or oh, reparations, or oh, all white people, or this or that. But it's like, you're speaking on stuff that you have not lived through, and the pain that you're speaking on regarding like racist and like injustice is not yours to speak on. You should be happy that your family came here and was able to thrive coming here and living the American dream, not being stuck on racist stuff that never really involved you as a person. Like it's destroying us as a country to have a bunch of people that have never experienced any kind of hardship like that come here and go, well, my ancestors went through slavery. Was it in America? No. Nah. Okay, then, well, don't you think you made it then? You're in America. You're not a slave. Your family made it from an area where they could have been living completely terrible lives. There's a good reason why you came to America. I know America is not the greatest place. I mean, yeah, we all know that. But it definitely is a place that people run to to be free. Yeah, and no one's trying to go to Russia or Brazil. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I want to be free when I come here. I want to feel free, me being a melanated individual living out here in Washington State. And Washington State claims to be this free, uplifting place. Well, that has not been the case since I became conservative, Republican, trying to speak my voice out here. And that was definitely not the case when I ran for office and all of my stuff. And I didn't even need to go and grab all of my signs because all of them were, were stolen. <laughs> so we're definitely gonna talk about your, your, your running for office and stuff in a minute. But um, what's your take on reparations for like the black community, right? And before you answer like, so, have, you know, before you answer like, you have to keep in mind, I'll push back a little bit. Like you have like the Japanese Americans, they got you no know, reparations for being internment camps. Native Americans got money. All the other communities have gotten you no know, money. The Jewish community's gotten money. The only community has not gotten any kind of money. Reparation, you want to call it, is the Black community. So what's your take on that? Um, I feel like we've waited a good amount of while for reparations. Because um, reparations, what, like, best question most people, I asked them was, what do you think reparations is? Because in reality, we we the promise that was made to us for reparations was given by a man who was pretty much just giving a, a rally cry for if you win this for us, then you'll have something. So in reality, 40 acres and a mule, that was supposed to be the quote unquote reparations that was given. It was, but it was never something that was unlock. It was never something that was a hundred percent promise. So on top of the fact, People claim to be black. Black holds no nothing. It's not a nationality. It's not a nothing. There have been countries that have fought legally to get rid of the word black because it holds no legal standing. 
So, uh, and then we get to the point where it's like, Black folks want reparations. But are we going to ignore the white people who also have lineage of slavery? Who, and, and I'm talking about like people who were, who have Black folks who were a part of their family, who are part of slavery. Well, will we ignore them as well? Because there will be a good amount of white folks who will qualify for that as well. And people are only looking at this skin deep. A lot, good amount of people are looking at the skin deep. But me personally, I don't think that we need reparations. Me personally, I believe that every time the government is put their nose in black community, it has been no good for the black community. And I feel like the black community would thrive without the government, period, and the money that it provides. Talk about this. Oh, oh, oh. You might have been interested. I'm not, I'm not actually, you know, of course, you're not an expert on any of this stuff I'm about to ask you, right? But like, so like, you know, like K Korean American come here to have the community, Jewish American come here, like all these people come here and have the community, right? The money, as a matter of fact, let me backtrack. So I know I read this somewhere where like, if someone spent a dollar in the Jewish community, it takes like 35 days to get out. Uh, Asian community takes 27 days to get out. You know, any community, like take, take, the dollar goes from person to person in the community. And supposing the black community, it takes like one day to that dollar leaves the community. It takes like how do you it, fix that? It takes less time than that. That's okay. It takes the way it, it's uh not even not even not even four hours circulation that it'll leave our community. Oh man, I, I was I was I thought it was like a day, so four hours. No. Um so I mean we're we're one of the highest consumers. Mm -hmm. As soon as we get money, it's it's spent. So and 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 that's been like I won't say good or bad, but it's like it has been like you know what's the word assets? That's been on assets. The thing about this this whole topic though that I find that it, it it the deeper I go into this topic, the more people start to realize on and the black community side, and that's why you've seen pockets of segregation happening. A lot of them have came to the realization that they would need to segregate in order for the black community to actually thrive. And I'm like, and I've, I've had literal discussions with some of these people, because if you look throughout history and you look like black folks were able to actually thrive before segregation. So now a lot of these people are seeing this and saying, well, okay, the only thing, the only way for black money to circulate within our communities is if we not not integrate into society and be to ourselves that's why there's a lot of talks about oh uh well we can we can start our own society we can do this we can do that we can do for ourselves and then that leaves us where well, what are we going to do with the people who are mixed like or with a certain percentage, are we going to out uh, kick them to the curb or like, are they going to have a place in this society? I feel like integration, we've gotten to the point where it's like we have so many people mixed and we brought in so many people from other countries that are of melanated, like they're all melanated, but they're, they have their own culture and they don't identify with black. So it's like, it's, it's hard to get anything fixed F now we're watering down everything it's been including race and who we are as melanated people or what they like to call african-american i'm like love is love for me i i don't really i don't really care but if you dig deeper into it it's a lot and it's crazy that that might be the road that a lot of people will take and that's completely cutting out white people and strictly just being all pro-black so next let's talk about your 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 campaign last year so you, tell me if i'm wrong but you ran against the speaker of the house for state of washington right yeah so how does it sound like a fucking question we're like so this is your first time running for office right did you ever get the feeling like the Republican Party is just like throwing you to the wolves, so to speak, right? Like, when you think about your like first time running for office, I mean, people know you, but you don't know anybody, and you run against the state speaker of the house, right? Like, 
do you ever say, man, what chance I had this? Or do you think this is a good experience for me? Like, kind of, I started like things like, it's not like the company just throw you to the wolves, so to speak, right? Yeah, a lot of people would think that. But at the, at the end of the day, I wanted to see what I could do. And when I seen that position and I seen that I could get help for running for that position, I was like, okay, well, this would be a great experience for me personally. I'll get to learn the, the political process. I'll get to actually run against somebody who's involved in that process. And I'll actually get to see the face of the woman that claims to be doing so much for Hilltop Tacoma, which everybody else is saying that she is not really as involved as she Now, the is. district is the 27th district. It's northern, North Tacoma, right? Yeah, it's North Tacoma and parts of Fife that we just took up. Now, is it like, what's the... Like the racial breakdown, like twenty five percent black, three percent white. What's the racial breakdown? Uh, I don't have that number on me okay. right now. Okay, can you give like an uh, estimate? Hilltop, or... I would have to say hilltop area. I don't. I mean, it's it's a fair amount of black folks. I don't okay. I, I yeah again I couldn't give it. So you giving a political answer right now? <laughs> I would like to say it's over twenty percent. Okay, so okay. hilltop. But like again, and did y'all do any like debate or anything like that? Uh, we did have one form, but she, uh, of course, she didn't have to really answer anything. She gave her opening statement and then pretty much cut out. Uh, she didn't go to the the, the church debate form, obviously. Um, so you think people in your district voted just because she's a Democrat? Yeah, yeah, it was just strictly. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at it. It they for position one, position two in the Senate position, they literally pretty much had the same amount of votes. Has that district always been like pro Democrat, so to speak? It's 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 a Democrat ish. I mean, they've they've elected a Republican at one at one point in some of those positions. I, I believe the Senate position. Okay, but uh, but as far as everything else go, uh, like it's fairly Democrat. Uh, no, yeah, because uh, Senator Obain, he was a Republican okay. S. So I mean, and he, I mean, I did a photo shoot with him when he when he was running for re-election. Okay, but uh, he ended up losing. So you might not know this, but like, so first of all, like in your election, I learned a tree like learn lesson, but like based on numbers, you kind of got destroyed. Like she has ten percent, twenty five percent. Having said that, like, do you know how you compare it with the other Republicans running for that place? Like. Did you do better, about the same? Any idea? Wait, say that like, one more time. like, do you know how, like, how you did compare to other Republicans that ran before you, like the same numbers? Were your numbers better? Any idea? Uh, I mean, as far as everybody else, I mean, we kind of got, we kind of got whipped. I mean, I was working a large area as far as the 27th. Uh, I think as a collective, as a Republican party, we all kind of did fairly bad. I mean, what some of the other, we were all within the 30 percentile, yeah. 30 and below. So I'm like, I mean, granted, obviously the districts that we knew were going to win, mm -hmm. as far as the Republican Party, they did well. But as far as the areas that we had high hopes for, because we had every area run, it was, it, it felt different, like especially Susanna. I thought for sure Susanna was gonna win her. I mean, I definitely thought. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Her campaign made me go out to do more. I was yeah. like, man, I am not doing enough. Looking, she, at was, her. she was definitely grinding. No yeah, doubt about that, right? Yeah, and even she didn't win. I was like, I felt like if we would have did a lot more, maybe. So, how much is that to blame on the actual candidate? How much is blame on like you know? the party not supporting you and how much is it to blame like people just you know oh i always vote democrat or how much is this to blame for apathy uh, like like i told I, susanna like most people like vote presidential elections they don't vote local elections i believe that again the overall messaging for the republican party because we got completely whooped regarding regarding roe v wade like that yeah was susanna like, said the same thing yeah, yeah that's her point too so that was like their number one thing that they kept throwing in our face. And then even though I would say something, it's like, it doesn't matter because 
the Republican Party is who they were listening to, the overall message of what they felt in other states. So they were like, oh, you're just going to make our abortions illegal. Yeah, I think Susanna said, like, you know, I, I, I'm paraphrasing. She said, like, even though I would have stood up and said, I'm um, like pro-abortion, they would have said, but the Kentucky senator says anti-abortion, so you don't, you want to take abortion rights away. Yeah, that's and then that goes back into other kinds of Republicans. I mean, there are <laughs> there are Republicans who are actually pro-choice. There are Republicans who are like pro-life with uh, with like exceptions. So like me personally, I'm pro-life. My my only middle ground really is the fact that I just want you to understand that you are getting rid of a life. I don't care if you get rid of a life. I just want you to know that that is what you're doing, mainly because you have the legal right to do so. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to step in your way of doing that, but I will say that there are definitely other options out there for you. You are you will be getting rid of a life. Um, my mother was put into that same situation and now I'm doing great things myself. So it's like, you know, and then again, we're 98% of women that got abortions only did it just because. So I feel like if there were better solutions and, and better statistics out there for those solutions, women wouldn't be so obligated to feel that they need to get rid of these babies. They would just they would they would just take them or at least not want to get rid of them and put them through adoption because there is a still a large percent of, of people that still want to adopt as well but just can't because of all the procedures they got to go through yeah i think one thing we gotta fix some of the way like so it's like it's not like people on the right they believe everyone getting abortion like all the liberals are they gonna abortion every single day because you know they don't want the household that's don't like, part abortion a day and then people left they think everyone on the right like like thinks like the opposite right but it's like it's more nuanced right you know it's like the word exceptions you know like like Susanna has a great story what she had to go through you know it's like yeah another thing too like this to me like if somehow we get rid of a well we get rid of probably the wrong term but like the one percent of people that are left right extreme I won't say well I'll say extreme crazy right one percent of the right extreme crazy it's somehow it's like they dominate the, the narrative right like somehow we could I won't say silence them because you don't want to do that of course like some way make the other 90% more strong, more like vocal, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like we have crazies on both sides. And unfortunately, even at some of the forums, like the overly vocal Republicans, I'm just like, bro, please stop talking. You're going to mess it up. <laughs> like, did you just say that out loud? <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong? it up for the rest of us. Get somewhere with your crazy shenanigans. And, you know, but it's like, I think it's good still that they have a voice regardless of how I feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to agree with every single Republican and uh, just like how I know I won't agree with every single Democrat on a lot of issues, but like, yeah, we, I think that both sides, the loudest mouth has definitely been able to uh, influence our elections on both sides. And that's really unfortunate because I, I honestly, I do like when I was listening to some of the, the, the democratic, uh, candidates regarding issues regarding our kids some of them especially the one that uh brett johnson was going against she actually had conservative answers for some of her stuff and i was like okay okay and and, and that made me realize okay that that could be my family member right there like that could literally be my family like they have conservative ideas about a lot of things but they know that they're <laughs> more profitable and more beneficial for them to run as a democrat in the democratic party yeah i mean yeah i mean reality is you want to get elected in the state of washington i mean democrat just like you know yeah like other as, state of texas it's hard to get elected you know as a democrat you yeah, know to run as a pro-choice democrat cons conservative democrat yeah and I mean, that's that your best option for you right there. And you can't even really label yourself as a conservative. So you, you more, I mean, I guess you could say you're Baptist or something, but for the most part, again, like I said, like she, she gave conservative like answers mm -hmm. to some of the issues regarding our kids and stuff like that, that even I was surprised. I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, 
gotta pay attention to some of these people because they might actually end up really being just like you, just yeah. on the other end of the aisle. I mean, perfect example, like Tulsi Gabbard, right? I mean, she used to be Democrat. She left the party, but like, I mean, she like she has a lot of different values. Like, she's like, I'm pretty sure she's like pro abortion, pro different things. But like, she's like a conservative person at, at, at a lot of things, right? But like, she left the Democratic Party, so like, yeah, there's, yeah, I think it's all mixes, right? Yeah. So this is a question for you. So like, I don't think this is a good idea, but I'm not, a lot of people will say, you know, like, you have two parties, it doesn't work, right? We well, first of all, let me backtrack. I think we actually have four parties right now. There's like the we'll say the liberals, the the modern Democrats, regular Republicans, like and like the Republicans. We actually have four parties, right? But a lot of people are like, no, we actually need four parties. I don't think that's a good idea because do we want to be a country like Italy or France, where like you're like someone who is an extra twenty percent have to do a government together and like it's all these coalitions. I don't know if it's a good idea either. We are like yeah, like you said, we we essentially and we already still kind of do have other like libertarian. Like, always forget about them like yeah. libertarian the green party yeah, always forget yeah, about them yeah, but they're, so they're a party yeah you're right the fact of the matter is it's like it all comes down to funding it all comes down to money uh all of our money are wrapped up with these two party systems regardless of how we feel and hate these two parties they are somehow getting our money if it's not out of our, our pockets out of all of these companies that we're, we're paying our dollars to they're funding whichever party. I mean, that's why a lot of people are mad at what McDonald's because McDonald's promoted uh, Trump. So, I mean, Trump eats your food once a day. You better goddamn promote it. <laughs> uh, boy, cop McDonald's. I'm like, you know, so it's like, and what most of our most of our chains are are uh, controlled by about what? It's about eleven companies in total. They're all controlled. So it's like, what more can we do but try to change the party in our own image? That's the way I've seen it as. I'm like, okay, well, we look at history. The Republican Party was was helped and created with the help of slaves, former slaves. So it's like, that was effort paying attention to history. That was the party of slaves for slaves. They say that there was a great party switch. Okay, that means that even though there was a great party switch, that we are still switching to the party that wanted to enslave us. So then I'm like, okay, so how am I the one with Stockholm Syndrome? If you guys still want to hang out with the party that pitched your ancestors as slaves, they want to talk about, oh, well, it wasn't the Democratic Party, it was the Democrats, but yet you still believe in the party switch. So which one is it? Was there a party switch or was there a whole completely different party? That's a, that's a good point. Very good point. Yeah. Um, so when you ran against Lori Jenkins for your campaign, were you running like, you know, I'm for this, I'm for that, or do, were you running like against Lori Jenkins? If that makes any sense. Uh, I could just say I was running just to talk about my own. So I'm running off of my own stuff. It wasn't really a, a, a thing. So it wasn't like, a, was it like vote for Jelani because Lori does this or doesn't do that. I did my best not to even reference Lori. Okay. Because I, well, I felt like bringing up her name would just make people know more about her. I, I wanted to really focus more on me because I already knew that regardless of the fact she was going to get more. Just a memory recognition for yeah. the position. Yeah. I mean, they, all they had to actually do, they sent out what those little cards that had all three of their faces on it. Mm -hmm. It was like, Hey, I think like, sure I, vote. I, like, I don't live, live in her district. I think I got that card once a week. Yeah. 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 So it's like, Oh, just make sure to vote. That's all she had to do. She didn't need no, no commercials. She didn't need it. So I'm not a politician, but I think that might have been mistaken part, right? The reason I'm saying, because I, I looked up your record, right? So like, she sponsored some bills. Like one bill, she sponsored like Celebrate Children's Day, Recognize President's Day, Honoring President, Honoring Dr. Martin Luther King, Honoring Jimmy Walker. So all she really did was like support, like do bills, like though, like, like, what's I'm looking for? Like, uh, fuck, um, like no sepsis, right? So like, what did she really do to help help your dissert, right? It's like, maybe sort of like, like no done that you know uh i mean again like i said that police pursuit is not really looking great for us right now yeah uh i did talk to a lot of the community team leaders that were involved even i'm guessing they still voted for her but they do feel like she used to be involved within the community mm -hmm. hardcore but then she completely fell off it was hard 
to even get in touch with her. My team, uh, they were actually worked on getting a bunch of signatures signed and uh, to hand to her. And uh, it took a minute until we ended up, they ended up cornering her at this event that she was hosting. And it was predominantly mainly Republicans that all knew each other that she didn't even know. So she got ambushed with a bunch of these documents, signed documents, and she did not want to take them. She was like, uh, well, just drop them off at at the cap uh, at the Capitol, whatever the case may be. But uh, yeah, it's like from my first and the crazier part is I didn't know anything about her until I started to run. So, and she's your representative in the, in the Speaker of the House. You had no clue who she was. Yeah, no clue who she was. No clue. So all my research was done after I was like, okay, oh, I should run for office. Okay, let me do some research and I'll get back to you on that. And then uh, I mean, the party had a, a campaign team ready for. And we did research. We were like told the like the the Republican Party, like, what, are you fucking kidding me right now? At like, first, like what the fuck's going on, right? First, are you, are you like, fucking throw me the wool, like, 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 like Lonnie, like he, he's like a sacrificial lamb. I was thinking, I was like, at first, I was like, no, but then I was like, I mean, they have this team ready for me. Some of the people are familiar. I'm like, this would be a great opportunity for me personally, and it could get my name out there. And this would be a really good way of figuring out this whole process because I've always been outside looking in. So I was like, okay, well, let's do it. Let's see. I mean, we've seen races with people that had a lot less than what I was presented with, and they somehow ended up pulling it out. Unfortunately for me, something ended up going wrong during the primaries for me and the people who were running my campaign. And uh, some, let's just say it got really messy. Mm -hmm. So about time I got to the primary, I went from having a campaign manager to not having a campaign manager anymore and running my campaign pretty much by myself with the, with the help of Susanna and uh, Ashley Ray. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot that happened during that. And... Sooner or later, I'll end up telling that story. Right now, I'm just marinating it and figuring it all out because there's just a lot. And, you know, I, I'll just say sometimes when people present stuff to you, you don't want to jump into it right away. I, I was presented with a great opportunity. It's just that the people who presented that opportunity to me didn't really uh, execute it the way that they were supposed to, which then resulted in me losing a lot of time and money. So, I mean, not to talk to a lot of people, like they think about a politician, a Republican, Democrat, like, you know, a white guy, a white female, three-piece suit, you know, get bachelor's degree, like, you know, how educated, like, like been in the party for a long time. You don't, don't, don't you definitely don't see the church, church, right? Former gang member, black guy, Republican, you know, TikTok, he has tattoos, you know, you're like drugs. Like, how, did, how was that a challenge for you? Or like, how did, that, how did that work out for you? Like, how do you make, make yourself like better candidate with all that I mean, stuff? People want somebody that, that they can relate to. And that's what, why Trump got elected in the first place. It's not that he was a politician, it was that he was a businessman. Once you figure out that America is a corporation, and that you're supposed to run it as a business, then it all makes sense. The man was was pretty much made for the position. And uh, America is not the same as it used to be. And just being a strict politician is not going to help America. We need to run it as a business. It is a business. We need to be America first. We need to focus our assets on American people and not send it overseas. Like... People are so concerned about helping NATO, but yet it's like NATO is good with and without us. So wouldn't it be good to focus on America first? On top of the fact, it's like they're already trying to get us for a lot of human rights violations anyway. 
So it's, it's like at this point, we're just giving money to people that don't that that's keeping a close eye on us. We're, so it's like we definitely need to focus more on on uh, the American people. I mean, having said that, I mean we are the war power, right? People do look at us for some leadership, other kind of stuff. So I mean, how do you balance like you know taking care of yourself and also being a war power? Because like, I mean, I think well, if we put, if, if well, we left everybody change, else, everybody else is their country first. Mm -hmm. But yeah. then when we talk about us doing the same thing, it's a problem. I remember when I was I, I was in the army, I was real stationed, I was stationed in Germany. And back then talking about like, the, the army, like United States military live in Germany, right? Well, we backtrack. Before that, there would all be protests on a military basis in Europe, you know, America leave, get the fuck out of here, blah, blah, blah. But then we we're like, we're gonna leave. People, oh no, don't leave, you know, our economy depends on you, right? And we're like, well, our only one focus is your economy, right? It's, it's national security, right? And like so yeah, yeah. National security threats and everything else. We've had several. Did we have national security threats during Facebook as well? Yeah, and everything else. So it's like we're. I think we're going to always have some kind of threat yeah. in America, especially online, because it's such a a monster. So it's like, I I can see why that's the case. I mean, it's crazy. Like everyone, it's like everyone hates us, but they love our culture, right? Like. We hate America, but give me your coat, give me your apple, or whatever the case would be, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's where uh, I feel a lot of American citizens come in. It's like, because we're sending all of our money out to a lot of these places that apparently hate us still, regardless of what we do and everything else. But yet we're supposed to be obligated to want to essentially help them still. And that, like, again, NATO, like a lot of leaders in NATO don't really respect America, but they know they can get a lot from America. So so why do you think that? Or why do you believe that? Because America has always been that that young kid that want to help everybody. But at the same time, we, we need to focus on ourselves. I mean, we're still that young kid on the block. If, if you don't realize America. that, we're only like not even 300 years old of country. There's other countries in the country like yeah, thousands of yeah, years, right? It's like we're the young kids helping out our elderly, even though the elderly are, are still extremely young. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, like all the European countries, get off my lawn, get off my lawn, America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, you want us to help you cross the street? It's like, yeah, yeah. But can you at least wait for it to like turn red? Like, <laughs> No, we got this. There's no cars. I'm like, yeah. So yeah. So let's suppose that you would have won the election. What are some things you would have focused on trying to do if you were elected? Uh, I think the first thing again uh, would be focusing on trying to make sure our streets are safe. Because I mean, that has been when I was door knocking. That was like one of the main things people were worried about was the fact that they didn't feel safe. They felt like anybody could break into their homes into their cars and nothing would happen until the end uh i mean housing the, the rise of housing and everything else they they feel like they won't be able to maintain living in these general areas for much longer but again the main thing for everybody was the homeless problem the cost of living and and uh safety security so it's like i would have at least tried to work on that but again like that the crime pursuit bill make sure criminals actually get charged when they're doing crimes and having weapons it seems like people who are law-abiding citizens with guns we could call saying that somebody's breaking into our house and law enforcement wouldn't be able to do anything until you told them that the that problem was resolved. Like that's the the situation we're living in today. I mean, the the call time for when police actually can get to us is uh, hour wait. That's a problem. Yeah, that's definitely not good. So, from your point of view, what is something that the Republican Party uh, in the state of Washington needs to do better? interact with with their inner cities okay that's like the number one thing they need to do and what's something the republican party does well in the state of washington um well their dinners are are amazing <laughs> they're, they're, they know how to throw some great dinners if we could just move those dinners into the hood people could see that they actually know how to cook 
Listen, uh, oh, shit. Make, that's some funny shit. I always make those jokes. I'm like, these guys know how to cook, they know about flavor. I promise, <laughs> they know about seasoning. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, yeah. And so, what's one thing you think this? And you already answered this question, but what's thing, one thing you think the, the, the Democratic Party instead of Washington does well? Um, I mean, they know how to get their message out there at the end of the day. Like, regardless of them not liking each other, whatever the case may be, they will get their message out there and they'll make sure that all of the candidates that they put, they presented are seen. Mm -hmm. And they're making sure they have their whole pamphlets all the time. Yeah, it does seem like Democrats, they have one message. Everyone says the same thing. We're probably like, this person says this, this person says that, like no continuity, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And then what's one thing you said the Democrat, Democratic Party in state of Washington does not do well? Um, that's <laughs> actually care about their citizens. Like, yeah, we can put out all these programs, but at the end of the day, they still got rid of a lot of programs that help people with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we they can claim to be the party that care about people, but at the end of the day, if you don't give it, if you don't care about people with mental health issues, you definitely don't care about everybody. If you're just providing a, pro a quick fix solutions that aren't actually helping the homeless, but moving them to different areas, you're not actually caring for people. So it's just a lot of, they're not good at telling the full truth. Yeah, like I can speak for the rest of the state, obviously, but like I know it's sad as come like the mental health crisis, like you'll, you'll see people in the corner talking to themselves. Like the other day, I was walking the area, this lady, like, basically walk from corner to corner, like taking her clothes off, threw us out the bus. It's like so many things you see, right? It's like, and it's sad, right? But like, and like I say, you know, kind of bad, like people with way more money than me and way more than me having to figure this out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's weird because it's like, I feel like I could do so much, but yet I'm, again, that former gang member who's just branching out. What can I do when people who are a lot older than me, people who are a lot more educated than me, apparently on paper, but it's like they've been trying, or at least they claim I mean, that they try. Amazon, I mean, I hate to say Amazon probably wastes millions of dollars every year, right? To make yeah. themselves look good and like nothing happens, right? It's like, I don't know. Like, like some I, of these big name politicians, are like, or some of these big name scientists are like outlawed in some other some of these other countries, but yet we hold them at so, such high regard, like Fauci. Like he's not even allowed to go back to India. Yeah, Fauci, that's a whole different conversation right there. And then like, you know, like, I actually experimented one day, right? One, 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 I'll say one good thing about Seattle homeless, like they're not really aggressive, right? Like I've been to other places, like they're like, like bad you, like me some money, right? At least in Seattle, unless you like stare them down, they don't ask for nothing, right? But one time I, I counted, right? So the time I got the bus to the time I walked to where I work at, right? I passed like 25 homeless people, right? I'm thinking about if I give each one a dollar, only a dollar, $25 a day, times 30 days, times 37 days, like that's not sustainable, right? No, no, not at I mean, all. You know, I mean, everyone like feels pity. I don't say pity, but like they want to help out, they do something like, what can you do, right? It's like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot because then there goes into play like a lot of conservatives don't really like social programs if they're not being allocated correctly. So yeah. That, again, that plays a part in creating social programs that would actually help the homeless that are actually. Yeah, I definitely think we need some kind of social net right now. Yeah. One thing like I don't like Republicans say like, you know, put yourself in the bootstraps. Some people don't have boots or bootstraps, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, feel, I feel it. Hey, some people don't even know where the bootstraps are or how to like even tie their shoes. So it's like if they've never been presented with showing somebody how to tie their shoes, how could they ever pull those bootstraps and tie and get the, and they start doing something? Like we have to provide, we need to show them that there are solutions, mm -hmm. create those solutions and show them that they exist. A lot of people don't see that these kind of things exist. Again, like I said, me living the lifestyle that I live. It took me going to Evergreen High School to see that there was robotics programs. In Evergreen High School, that's in Tacoma. Yeah, no, that's in uh, that's in Berrien or Berrien? White, White Center. White Center. Yeah, where's White Center at? White Center is just uh, down the way from Berrien, West Seattle. Okay, I never heard of White Center before. Yeah, it's one of the it's the hood. Is so it definitely okay. the hood still? Yeah. And so, are you still involved in like robotics and tech and stuff like that? 
Um, no, I am not. I mean, granted, I still like dabble with technology and everything else, but I 3D print sometimes. I have like my own 3D printer, uh, Indoor 3. Uh, and I just, I talk to people about 3D printing and everything else. Okay. I, I wanted to get into 3D printing because I always wanted to learn how to 3D print a, a, a working heart. So that's like one of those things that I'm venturing into as well. Okay. So what's your political future, right? Are you going to try to run for the same office again? Uh, it's ideal that I would want to run for the same office again. Uh, so I'm going to push back on that real fast. So like, I want to say, I'm a question, nothing's a losing there, right? But like, it's not like you'd be better. So like, maybe you're like running for like, you know, an other office, maybe mayor of Tacoma, maybe city council. Like, it, yeah. I mean, it's like, I don't I hate to say like, you know, but let me backtrack. Like, I never said there's a losing lecture, right? Like people like, I'm from Texas, right? People don't realize that Texas is a real Republican right now, right? But for like the 60s, to like 1980s, Democrats won everything. 1980s, Republican, this Republican ran governor. And then, uh, no, 90, this 80, this governor for pay, Bill Cummings ran, ran, ran. And then he lost 84. For 84 to 94, Democrats run. 94, Bush the second ran for governor, right? He ran against real popular and richer, liberal Democratic governor. Like everyone loved it, right? And he won, right? And he's been recovered ever since then, right? So there's no such thing as an impossible race to win, right? Because no one thought Gun Bush would win, right? They like call him Little Bush. You don't have a fucking chance. So it's going to your house. And he blew Richards out, right? So there's no such thing as not being able to win. There's already a chance, but still, however, come a light. Uh, I mean, I think this time around, people will have a fresh breath of air of who I was. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point. So, like, I wasn't known the first time around. Uh, I feel like, uh, the Republican Party seen what they did wrong last time. So now we are at a position where we can try to do better, mm -hmm. especially if I do decide to run again. Uh, but yeah, I just feel like repetition. You know, I knew that it was going to be an uphill battle for me. Uh, to continue to do it again would seem like it would be a logical choice as far as like getting my name out there and people seeing that, oh, well, that option's there again for me. It's not just a different option of people I don't know compared to the same thing we've been voting for. So obviously this person must care enough to try his hand at it once again. That's a great point. That's and a very good point. I do care. That's why I'm like, when people are looking, oh, don't try it again. I'm like, well, that's essentially what they would want. They want yeah. a bunch of new fresh faces that nobody knows. And so they can get that easy win because name rep that they recognize that name. It's a familiar name. That's the person they've been voting for every time. You can tell by just the down ballot votes. They don't know her personally. They just know that that's the person they've been voting for. So, so there's an Eddie Murphy movie that came out a long time ago, right? I can't remember the name of it. But basically, the premise of the movie was this old white dude, I'm making this name up. His name was like Abraham Wilson, right? He ran, has to run for 55 years, right? He died, right? Eddie Murphy's character was named like um, Aaron Wilson. So they ran as A. Wilson or A. Wilson, like same name, right? So they voted for I him, think, right? Yeah, I think I've seen that actually. Yeah, it was like, it was a, they didn't make this a big thing. And they, they somehow they pay, they, they, they uh, paid off the people that put his name on the top of the list, right? Like he's the same person, right? So you're kind of like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, black dude, a 95-year-old yeah, white yeah, dude, yeah, right? Yeah, it was supposed to be the white dude. Yeah, I, I remember seeing that. Yeah, yeah. so it's like, so don't we feel like don't realize how, yeah, it's craziness, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, essentially it would, be like that except not like that right yeah and, yeah and so what are you doing to make sure you keep your name in in the front of your district like you no know, keeping your name i'm getting kind of involved in a lot more program because i mean community service is important when it comes to running for office people want to know that you're actually doing something like i said before i'm going to start collaborating with uh the woman that started the sex trafficking mm -hmm. group because I feel and, like and can you talk real fast on you don't even like some kind of a homeless camp group or something like that like homelessness thing uh, so uh homeless safe yes uh, that's it yeah uh, that's ran it by brad johnson i'm supposed to uh, also be collaborate collaborating with him with the homeless encampment outreach program that they're building up at homeless safe. i mean uh tacoma safe so uh the virginia taylor club is the main uh hub that i'm using as far as outreach uh we're gonna really be tackling trying to get more um community service down within that club as well and seeing how it's ran via the 27th it i mean 
it, it will focus more on things that we need within the 27th. And that's why I wanted to be vice president for that position. And I helped with Kristen with being the president because I felt that she was made a perfect president and I was going to be a good vice president. So you have a full-time job. You're doing all this political stuff. You're married. You had like two or three kids, I think. Like, how do you balance all this stuff? Like, how do you like make sure, like how you take care of your family, give your wife the time, kids the time they need, focus on your job? Like, how do you manage all this? Uh, well, as of right now, I am, uh, I mean, I don't really talk too much about my life, but I am uh, going through somewhat of a separation. But, you know, as far as my kids, I'm always constantly around them whenever I have time even like TikTok, like I only do that once like like in the mornings mm -hmm. or at night. Other than that, it's strictly either going to work or spending time with the kids. So, I mean, it's not hard to juggle considering the fact that a lot of these uh, events are, a lot of them are just once a month meetups. And then we just figure out what we're gonna do within those whole weeks. We try to schedule everything the best that we can. I definitely try to schedule my schedule to match up with everything. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just being organized. Okay. Like it's a lot of being organized. So what do you see your political future as? Like, do you see yourself being like, you know, the mayor of Tacoma, governor of Washington, a senator? Like, what's your political goals? Of course, people say as I, politicians have political uh, goals. But what is that? If, if it leads me that direction, because it seems like, my fam, I'm moving closer and closer back to Seattle. I would probably most likely do a lot more regarding the school board in Seattle. That would probably be my other push once getting done with, with everything I'm doing in Tacoma would be school board Seattle. I mean, I would have a good amount of name recognition. I already have a lot of name recognition in Seattle enough as it is just through my, my social medias because a lot more people follow me in Seattle than they do in Tacoma. A lot of people were following me based off of my analytics from Seattle and my race compared to Tacoma as well. And can you talk about this? Like, I think most people out of Seattle, Washington, they're, they're, they, they believe like, you know, the whole state of Washington is liberal, liberal left, capital L, whatever. But reality, it's the I-5 corridor, Seattle to Olympia, like real liberal. Pretty much the rest of that Creole is a Washington that like kind of conservative. Yeah, you talk about that. It's it's fairly conservative in a lot of areas. Even Tacoma is like I feel like it's purple. Like, I, I know a lot of people will say like Puyallup critics are like they're like that's like like conservative like Texas, right? Pierce County. Because yeah, if you like think Texas. about it, like the the amount of people that live in Tacoma is not that's not even like a predominant base of people that are voting. Like the ones that are voting. Or that's not like the overall base of people. There's a fair amount of people that don't vote because they don't feel like their vote matters. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those people are. And that's a whole other total discussion. Yeah, yeah. So, and a lot of those people are, some of them are, which are conservative. It just, they know that they live in blue areas and they just know that their vote doesn't matter. That's why, like, when Trump ran and the red wave happened, the silent majority. Like you found out a, a large number of people actually voted for Trump in, in Washington state. Mm -hmm. It's like, but yeah, throughout my campaigning, I found that there's a lot of conservative areas that gave me hope for Washington state. Maybe not want to leave so badly. I'm like, oh, I could just move to a conservative area in Washington state. Yeah. So your hat says make the hood great again. And so that's the take on make America great again, I'm guessing, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. In a sense, uh, the hood. I mean, short for neighborhood. Our neighborhoods were great when fathers were actually involved in the home mm -hmm. and actually had time to spend with the children. Nowadays, the parents are we're dealing with single parent households. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with the we're dealing with the with the government that don't care about the family structure and the family unit anymore. Mm -hmm. And we're dealing with people we we dealt with a time where the fathers were getting locked up and the children were getting raised by drug addicts. And it's like- You're talking about the 80s crack academic, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. So it's like, now we're in a time where women believe that they don't need a man. And it's like that the women power movement made things quite crazy, but now it's like, you don't really hear too much about them anymore but you do see the damage that it caused regarding a lot of the women 
and not really needing a man and then seeing the structure of like the minority community with there being a large percentage of women who don't have a man but their baby's dad they're they have the same baby's dad within that general group mm -hmm. so there's a large number of women that are with the same person mm -hmm. as well so it's very unsettling yeah so um one, one thing i'm a firm believer as a country like we gotta do better than have 2024 body versus trump like having said that it's not like in the Republican Party, even though all the problems Trump is going through, oh, you know, like he might get arrested soon. I don't know. It's like the Republican side can be but a Trump versus DeSantis. What's your take on all that election if that happens? I don't think that's gonna happen. No. Uh no. I mean, DeSantis already said he wasn't running that side, didn't he? I mean, he had a lot going on with his wife as well. I mean, everything he's doing, like he's running, like he went to Iowa, he's been like he's like he like stolen shit at Trump, you know. Like he's doing the stuff like he's gonna run for office. I think it's all theatrics. Think so? I, I think at this point i mean even sure though, they, even though a lot of people like DeSantis, i don't think he would have enough support in order to get him over surely well, trump can't i mean trump's going again but i mean i, I mean are the american people going to run like someone like him again like you know all the cities going through like maybe i mean my thing is like i think we have to do better than fighting trump yeah i i, I strongly believe we, we we i would love to do better than them but at the same time you look at the situation that we're in right now Trump has become very powerful within the movement. I mean, he's at least coherent, at least from what we could tell. Uh, but would, I, I'd be crazy to be like, okay. I mean, that, you definitely can't count Trump out. They, he has that much control in the party. I mean, what was going on on our end out here in the Republican Party, we had people who don't necessarily support Trump still screaming about the endorsement he gave to uh to our chair our state chair mm -hmm. when he endorsed them yeah so it's like and i know that our, our party our state party doesn't really vibe with trump like that yeah but they definitely were happy to get his endorsement when it came to that whole situation so who who are some alternatives that are to Biden and trump like on the democrats like toss a gap would never run again i don't think Republican side, I don't know, maybe Nikki Haley. I don't know about Mike Spence, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I think it's Slim Pickens, right? Like, someone, like, some, some, I want to say, like, a Captain America needs to come from some other party, but like, something needs to happen, right? Well, my, my thing is, too, like, can we get someone at least 60 years old and younger? Um, I mean, I know somebody threw out a, a good run for when Trump ran, and uh, I mean, I did see it. And that was to have his uh, VP be Chelsea Gabbard. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I could kind of see that. You know, I don't see no problems with that. That fits all the, the boxes checked. And plus, it, she's, uh, you know, she was a former Democrat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we might get a little bit of insight on something yeah. that they're feeling. But other than that, I'm like, yeah, I, I mean, DeSantis is the next year around, next election around. I yeah. feel like that would be strong uh, for him to hold off on this election mm -hmm. and run the next election. Yeah. I think that would be a lot better. Yeah, I think DeSantis is going to run. He's like, he's been Iowa. He's, he's saying the stuff I think he's going to run. He has said he has officially announced it. Like, like, he's been throwing shade at Trump, right? Like, he said something like, you know, like he said, you know, this is how I do things in Florida without the plus drama, without the, without the um, controversy, you know? So. Well, only time will tell, I guess, because... I mean, 2024, like next year, right? I mean, it's right around the corner, right? You know? I'll definitely be taking a look and I'll examine it because, of course, like, people assume that I'll just going to... If I see that there's no wasted vote, mm -hmm. I'll obviously make my decision accordingly. But yeah. if I see that somebody's just out there wasting votes... I'm obviously going to make the logical decision. Yeah. I mean, that's just how I feel. It's just like how people were misusing their vote when uh, Joe Jorgensen ran. And they're like, oh, I'm just going to vote for the, the Libertarian Party. I'm like, well, the idea of it sounds great. But at the end of the day, you're still taking away from votes just because what? You still don't, you ultimately don't even like Joe Biden still. Yeah. So why don't you just go with the monster that you know that you that you can at least work with?
Yeah, and what that don't say, a lot of people realize when, 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 when he's running Trump Center again, I think he like kind of a lot of us for this, right? Like he got elected and then like he put these, and he pretty much ran like, like overturning Roe versus Wade, right? How many elections are overturned Roe right? And he put those three conservative judges and then got overturned, right? So I think he's going to say, hey, don't forget, I put these three judges on here and Roe versus Wade was overturned. I think he's going to let dialogue for us like that. I mean, I could be wrong, of course. Well, I don't like to speak on the future because I might end up still running. So people are going to look at me crazy. But I mean, overall, I mean, yeah, I already know they're going to make Roe v. Wade an issue again this next coming election. Yeah. I mean, that's obvious, even though Washington State is a non issue. See, and that's why I hate focusing on those elections because then it takes away from what we need to do out here in Washington mm -hmm. State. Because it's like we can't operate at the same level as them. Yeah, we're, we're you know, it, it's going to be a losing factor every single time. Hey, so have, have you ever watched this podcast called uh, "Now We Eat the Hot Ones"? Uh -huh. So the podcast, the in-person podcast. So I'm trying something new, right? This is now sitting now for us. Yeah, our fucking Siri just fucking came on. <laughs> like shut the fuck up, Siri. I don't know. Okay, so basically, it's like we're it's an in-person podcast in high wings, and and for the show, they bring out the computer and they show like three Instagram in three Instagram things like and the person responds to it right. So what I want to do with you, I want to bring up a TikTok and have you pick three TikToks and just talk about the TikToker, right? Is that okay with you? <laughs> sure. Yeah, cool. <laughs> this should be fun. All right, so it's up to the TV. Just tell me like which one you want me to pick, or which one we go down, or give me any of them. Like just like why you made the TikTok, your background, you know, like. Uh, sure, you can choose anyone. I don't really mind. Okay. Um, man, I wish I could find the one. There was the one where there's like the um, shit. Which one was it? I can't find it. There was one like there was like a Harry Potter one on here. Yeah, the Harry Potter ones are at the top. The top. Okay. Oh, was it? the two? What? Which one? Would describe it. I know all three, all the Harry Potter ones were all like consecutively, like right Is next it this to each other. One? I think it's this one. Uh, so that was my way of promoting somebody's bit small business while at the same time showing them that I need some of their Harry Potter merch. Uh, <laughs> during that time, uh, the conservatives were going at each other's throats. So I decided to take a break from uh, debating and all that on TikTok because it was just way too much drama at that time. So, you know, I, I just wanted to give somebody a little shout out for the merchandise while at the same time, you know, stepping away from the political scene for a minute. All right. And this guy, I'm a big fan of this guy here, Keith Lee. Apparently this, this whole ordeal has been going on for like two days, or at least it took her like two days in order for her to like respond. I remember this. This lady like did some bullshit. Yeah, she accused him of stealing his uh, idea. And everyone has a fucking idea, yeah. Goddamn right. <laughs> Keith Lee is a motherfucker man. You can't fuck with Keith Lee. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm like, yeah, like, I think some L's you should just take uh yeah quietly matter of fact tattoo the l on your forehead yeah, so yeah. You, you gotta fuck with Keith he's Lee. one of the nicest people ever and he's like he, what he does is what i try to do i mean that's help he, small he, business he's making people like millions of dollars yeah yeah for sure he made me want to start a business just so i could um say any one of these which one you want to do next last one. Oh, thanks for posting this on Susanna. appreciate uh, yeah, it yeah yeah you know give it a little shout out uh I mean, yeah, I mean, you can choose anyone, anything, anything. Actually, like, let's go back in time. Through this one. Actually, which one? I'm trying to find where he had a... This good lady right here. Um, well, that's Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
man, this one you had like a really a lot of views on. Let's do this one. Maybe not. Let's do this one. Sometimes you see the good in humanity at times, you know, so at that the university district was surprisingly enough where all my signs stayed up oh, wow. or got, is... got repaired. So nice. like, I, I appreciated that general area. Like I, that was like the, the area where I didn't have to worry. The, and surprisingly, everybody thought that that would be the most hard spots for me, mm -hmm. but like the university area, which was not the case. So do you have fun doing TikToks? Um, I have fun at times until like the drama with the conservatives end up happening. And then it's hard for me to really figure out what spaces I could be in without all that extra drama glomming over on me. But like I, I started TikTok because I wanted to get more involved with my daughter and and get her and, and to give her a different perspective on what's out there on TikTok. And then it turned into something else. Like when I first created it, I was I was showing her, sending her uh, screenshots. I was like, "You see, I just created a TikTok. Let's see how fast I can build me up a following." And she was like, "Yeah, ha ha. Let's see. I'm sure you won't build up that fast of a following." My first account that I made made it to 27k in two weeks. And, and what do you account that to? Just your personality, authenticity, or what do you think that comes maybe, from? Maybe, uh, maybe people just wanted something different because at the time there was the same usual people that was causing trouble. But I just like to think that I had a likable face. <laughs> There's a lot of people that get a lot of likes, but yet people don't follow them. So yeah. I was getting a lot more followers than I was getting likes to the point where my likes were catching up to my following. And TikTok, that's like your pretty much your main social media. Yeah, well, that's my main social media right now. I mean, I'm on Facebook, mm -hmm. but for some weird reason, Facebook doesn't push none of my stuff. So I'm stuck at 5,000 followers. Mm -hmm. It's like weird. Uh, Twitter banned me and then allowed me to come back. Why did Twitter ban you? They said I was a danger to the society. Mm -hmm. Whatever that was, was that when Jack Dorsey was in charge or Elon Musk was in charge? Uh, Jack. Yeah. So you probably get back now with Elon Musk on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already back now, okay. but I just haven't really posted all too much. I'm on True Social, but I feel like that's just an echo chamber. Uh, I'm on Clapper. I haven't heard of Clapper. Which one is that? It's <laughs> uh, it's hard to. It's is that like a conservative social media or something it's like that. Kind of like TikTok. Okay. Yeah, uh, conservative-ish. Okay. Not so many boundaries, but still a lot of weird stuff that happens on there. So yeah, as far as anything, TikTok is the only one that I have 100k plus followers. Okay. On. So on social media, like you know, everyone's for free speech, but how you balance free speech with people like yelling, like they say, like yelling fire or not in the theater, right? How do you how do you think we need to balance that? Um, I mean, I hang out with people that just want free speech of all kinds and in that way we can see the stupid people out in the open um i mean i guess we really gotta ask ourselves what how free do we want our speech in reality because me personally i would like it to be out there in the open so then that way i know what to stay away from yes yeah, so you I know mean, who your quote unquote you enemies are right cancel people let let them be free to say whatever they want and then you can just go away from them and see what kind of person they are. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in canceling all speech because then we end up like living out here in Washington State where people don't say how they feel, but you can definitely tell how they feel by the way that they act. Yeah. And there's a lot of low key racism without even saying it. Yeah. I've heard people say before, like, like racism in Seattle is like kind of like, you know, like behind the scenes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, we don't know who they are, you know, where other places like, you know, some of us racist, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'd much rather see my racist than to have my racist right there pat me in my back just to find out that he's making a lot of money off of me and he doesn't really care about my well-being. 
Yeah. So, Jelani, is there anything I said I've asked you I haven't or anything you want to talk about that we haven't covered? Oh, no, man. I'm just here for the conversation. I'm glad you have me on and everything else. You know, so happy to actually be here and uh, have my voice be heard. I mean, I don't really have anything to mind that I have to talk about. I mean, you pretty much touched base. On okay. Um, so I do have one more question. Like, so all the stuff you're doing, like, it's pretty much like, you know, free of charge. You're not getting paid for it. Um. I'll put this question. Say that part again. So like, so like you know, free, all, free of charge. Free of charge. Pay, yeah. And people free. think that I make a lot of money yeah. on this app and everything else, and I don't. I don't get paid to do this. Even the this the, who I'm sponsored through, mm -hmm. I don't make money off of them. I I just like helping the businesses. Yeah. So that's another question. Like, if you are like if you are elected, what would you do for small business? Well, I would make it so that especially when uh, they had the options of actually making it so during the coronavirus, small businesses were the first thing to get shut down. Mm -hmm. Like those were the first thing to get shut down and we had to rely on all of these big corporations. It's bad enough that the majority of our big corporations are owned by a few people, mm -hmm. but to shut down our small businesses and make it hard for them to thrive and flourish was definitely a problem for me uh so i definitely would like to try to make it so that there are more people out there able to actually start businesses and keep their businesses that has been like because me personally i'm a young guy i want to start a business but every time i talk about starting a business out here it seems like that is like not something that is likely to happen mm -hmm. People are saying, well, it would be better off going somewhere else, starting a business. I mean, that was apparent through Chop Chaz, seeing what happened during that whole situation, seeing that businesses weren't actually protected. And the people that felt that, oh, well, they have insurance. No business wants to use their insurance. That's yeah. the last thing that they want to do. It affects them in a very negative way. And we can't put that in our small businesses or else nobody's going to want to start businesses out here. It's a, I mean, it's bad enough our big businesses aren't even really trying to start businesses and, and bring more out here. Mm -hmm. And people play into count, oh, well, there's more people hiring. And there's, I'm like, these are people that are going back to work yeah. from getting laid off. That, that, that's okay, I mean, too, right? When, when people say, oh, there's a thousand new jobs. No, not really. It wasn't a thousand new jobs. It's just people going back to the old jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Sometimes the middle of the max is like, Republicans and Democrats both do it. That's just amazing, you're right. Yeah, both sides got got a lot where like again, when I was talking to Susanna. I'm like, there's a lot that the Republicans do that irritates me and everything else. So it's like sometimes I think in my head, like maybe it would be more beneficial to run as an independent. Like who knows? But I still have I still have faith though. So I'm gonna give it another try, you know, get a Republican Party a good go, you know. Hopefully we're all on the same page, you know. Uh, I'm like again. I'm only 30 years old, so I'm just trying to get it all out. So, being only 30 years old, like, how do you like uh, what's we're looking for? Like, how you deal with people like you know, like way older than you in the in, in, in the politics, right? They're 50, 60. Like, how do you like make sure like your voice is heard? You know? Oh well, typically I don't have to try that hard in, in the party because I have a strong voice within the party. Mm -hmm. So, like, they typically want to hear what I have to say at all the avenues regarding like things going on with the Republican Party and what's going on. And I, I've i yet to find a spot where I wasn't able to get my voice heard so far. Okay. So I don't think that's ever been an issue. I think it, uh, me just joking around with them about me being young is just funny enough. And now like I am the youngest PCO at our meetings mm -hmm. for like our district meetings and everything else. Everybody else is like 35 and older. Yeah. And I'm, I just turned 30, so. So next question, who who are your, some of your mentors? Uh, Like on and off of TikTok or just On anything, like, you know, politics, personal life, business, whatever. So uh, I got a guy named M.O.D. He uh, was actually the one that uh, consulted me. He's a, he is a constitutionalist. So he talks to me and about uh like the policing and how like they're not actually bound by the constitution by 
our constitution, but by the con constitution of the corporation. So these are things that we need to work on as far as that goes. We, I've been talking with him and trying to figure out what we could do regarding that. But if anything, I mean, people that I've consulted with on a daily, I mean, I pretty much almost talk to Susanna all the time regarding a lot of things going on in, in our general area. And then Kristen and Ashley, uh, both of them, Kristen is the vice president of the, I mean, the president of the Virginia Taylor Club and, uh, and Ashley is the vice uh, chair for uh, our uh, district. So, you know, um, I, I, I guess I could say that women, <laughs> conservative women have definitely been like the, the key to my sanity in Washington state. So second part and probably more important part, important part of the question, who are you mentoring? Uh, me personally? Uh, well, besides people on TikTok, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is an ongoing thing right now. I mean, I run into a lot of younger kids, like when I'm at work and stuff like that. Like I'll inform them of the things that I do, inform them that, you know, you could be young working and still involved. So me personally mentoring somebody, no, I have, I'm not doing that as right now because I still feel that I still have a lot to work on myself. Mm -hmm. But when I am able to provide any information, I definitely do, do provide that information. Now, how does it work for your job? Like you have a full-time job, like how, how does that work as far like you run off? Like they support you, you got to like, do things on the download. Oh, so my, my job did support me. The one I was working for until they changed, they switched out the, the, the management. And then the new management thought that I was just some guy that was jagging off. And I'm like, no, this is like stuff we already had set into place. So like that kind of got kind of mixed up in the fold. So I ended up finding me a different job. Uh, my security job is a lot more lenient at my hours. I pretty much plan a month ahead of time for security. So, you know, it's, it's reasonably manageable. So from your last election, what are some things you learned? Well, not to trust literally everybody within the Republican Party. I mean, I, I might have a side with the Republican Party, but there's some people that even though you have a smile on your face and a good pitch, sometimes it's just best to just do your own thing if you are going to run for office. Uh, definitely collaborating with other people within the party that are running is definitely it's it's good to have a good communication and a network of people that are doing the same thing as you. That's why after I ended up not having my uh, campaign manager anymore, I started doing a lot more collaborations with Susanna and uh, Ashley. And, uh, you know, I mean, I guess signs were a good idea. So just implementing where I want to put my signs and possibly doing something as far as like uh, trying to collaborate with the Republican party to get a, an overall message. Okay. Cause that like, was the main thing I felt like was a problem. Like we all, we, we all had an overall message regarding us all running in every single position, but not when it came to the, 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 the situations and the issues that the people wanted to hear about. Like it was great that we literally had every position filled for running but it wasn't great that we didn't have an overall message for all of us. Okay. Did you and Susanna and Ashley, her name is Ashley Ray, right? Yeah. Did y'all three know each other before y'all ran for office or uh, y'all been friends for I a while? I actually met Susanna at an NRA event. For my, 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 What's the surprise that she went to the NRA event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was at uh, my, my first, uh, well, I, was, I was running for office and my first few events to go in. I already knew who she was beforehand. Mm -hmm. Like I added on her Facebook and everything. everybody told me about her. And I was like, okay, well, I'm sure I'll run into her sooner or mm -hmm. later. Ashley, I met her a year back mm -hmm. before I ran. And we were, were both walked away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she walked away from the Democratic Party being a former uh, leftist strategist. And I walked away from the Democratic Party being a Black Lives Matter supporter. Obama supporter and former gang member. 
And what's actually wasn't I think it, Susanna told me that she was like used to be a part of Antifa or something like that. Yeah, that's yeah, her opinion. Yeah. She was uh, very uh, engulfed in all. No, that's that. a big fucking um, chain of Antifa, the Republican Party. <laughs> like, goddamn. Yeah, yeah, Talk yeah. about a change. Yeah, fat change. I'm like, yeah, and I guess it might seem hard for people to think that she's not like a plant or something. Now, I, I mean, I, 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 would, I would think of, I would, that's what I would think too, nah, right? But, yeah, no, she got good intentions and like she's very knowledgeable about a lot of things, especially yeah. when it comes to like tactics. So, so I don't know, Ashley, but it seems like you and Suzanne almost have like this you no know, brother sister relationship almost. If you could call it that, I would call it we just really trust each other a lot. Yeah. Uh, I'm really picky about family terms seeing how i don't really have family mm -hmm. like that that i like connect with too hardcore mm -hmm. but i can honestly say that you know uh you're a big fan of her yeah i would say one thing like you like in the interview you pretty much said like you're not like you're not pro christian or whatever but i saw a facebook post with you and just susanna where you said hey i'm ready to line the church he came right so yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess it wouldn't be bad to get back into church again. Like I said, I'm not really a big church guy, but I definitely if you invite me, I'll do my best to show up mm -hmm. because I feel that it is important to try to build a community. And I do want to get more involved within the church community mm -hmm. because I was very involved beforehand, but it seemed like work and everything else took me away from that. Yeah. So one more time, anything else you want to ask you? Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, I think we've been hitting everything on the now for you. Okay. So we're about to get out of here. Uh, can you give us any last minute of wisdom or advice or anything you want to talk about? Uh, I've learned that everybody feels that you can be too young in order to uh, run for office. But at the end of the day, a lot of these people that have been running for office, their age don't really mean nothing because you could just be alive for a lot longer and be wrong for just as, just as long. So, I mean, just do your own research and do your best to try to help out everybody that you can. You can't save everybody and everybody that you can't save, just give them a little bit of time. Cause I know it took me a minute to finally get my head straight being a former Democrat and going, oh man, that's what they meant. Sometimes it just takes time. Like not everything's gonna be a quick fix. Jolani, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. And to our listeners, thanks for your time as well. Remember to be great every day. Turn this off.